What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my people. I'm looking at the mic. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Look who we got here, y'all. Look who we got here. Hello. He if, dragged me here. Yeah, <laughs> for 2022, we want to get Kimbo on the channel more. Y'all been requesting Kimbo, so uh, yeah. we're trying to get her on the channel more. If you're in the chat, say what's up. And um, if this audio is good, please let me know. Because yes. this is going to be kind of weird. Uh, Cause it's two of us, so yes. we're trying to get this audio right. So if y'all could let us, just give us a thumbs up. If All this right. audio is good, if it's too loud, say it's too loud. If it's too low, say it's too low. Twenty twenty two, y'all are y'all excited? It's a new year. Crazy. Okay, let's see what we got in the chat. I'm gonna start shouting out some people in the chat. Uh, then we're gonna hop into uh, client communication. I'm still looking at the mic. What am I doing? We're gonna hop into client communication. Booking clients um, through consultations, which Kimbo is the expert on that, which is why we got her on this live stream. I'm excited. I'm excited. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And I just like, I like doing shit with my wife. So uh, <clears throat> we're excited. Let's shout some of these people out in the chat. Um, we got Cooley. Hey, is there anyone there? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I didn't even see y'all's comments. Uh, it took me a while to get to them. I got my boy Courage in the comments. What's up? What's up? Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year. My boy TC, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Kimbo, yes, sir. Kimbo <laughs> is back on the channel for 2022, man. Kimbo is, she's going to be making some uh, some more appearances, so uh, be ready for that. She's going to be making more appearances, and she don't even know that yet. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is the A-Train and Kimbo show. So this is going to be a legit show uh, that we plan on doing. Um, mm -hmm. What did we say we we're going to do? At least to start oh, off, um, maybe like once a once a month or so, depending on how you know that's, how much I want me on there. That's not enough for YouTube. <laughs> that's not enough. So yeah, this, this is going to be the A Train and Kimbo show. We're going to be dropping some gems and um, just vibing with y'all and um, seeing what's up with y'all. Okay, Curry said the audio is good. Appreciate that. Thanks. Yay. Thanks. Man, we did a whole live before. <laughs> Somebody sent me a message on IG afterwards, and it was like, man, that audio was on your trash. live was trash. I was like, why didn't you tell me that on the live? Like, help a brother out. Come on, man. TC, what's up? What's up? What was that Sketchy Frankie? What's up? What's up? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2022. Let's get it, y'all. I'm excited. Um... Curse said, yes, Kimbo and A-Train show. I like that a lot, man. Me too. I don't like Kimbo first, though. It don't really, oh. it don't, it don't flow off the tongue, right? <laughs> so A-Train and Kimbo show. Yeah. What you think? Yeah, that's kind of how we always have said it. <laughs> if you're in the chat, say what's up. Don't be a ninja watcher. Don't be scared. Say what's up. Uh, just drop where you're from. Um, like I said, in a minute, we're going to be getting into um, some tips on just client communication, which is very important. We figured it's the new year, too. Um, you know, people usually around this time it's usually slower yeah. so people are trying to get their business um you know like do stuff on the back end get everything squared away for when it gets busy again right mm -hmm. so i figured this would be good information to help y'all um with booking clients because client communication is a big part of booking clients consultations for us has been a big uh big part and we've had a lot of success with mm -hmm. consultations to where we pretty much do them all the time um i'm gonna get back into this chat uh here from chicago that's what's up um i was stationed in great lakes when i was in the military so I, i've been in chicago a couple times man it is cold it is cold down there never been there they call it the windy city oh yeah yeah it's it is freaking cold i legit seen a blizzard when i was in great lakes it, it was crazy um courage said massachusetts i advise you not to come here for photography though um you won't get far <laughs> i don't get it Massachusetts. He's saying like it's. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you meant about talking about. It. I'm like, what? That's all I talk about. I got you. I got you. Massachusetts. What is uh, that? Delaware. Like Boston area. Boston. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold down there, right? Um, 16 viewers. What's up, man? Y'all say what's up. Don't be no ninja watchers. Now it's 2020, 2022. No ninja watchers in 2022. You better say what's up if you hop on the stream. Don't be scared. Um, you know me and my wife. We we chill and cool. We don't no pressure. No um, pressure. Gene in the house, NC in the house. I was actually right. stationed in NC. I was stationed in Jacksonville, North Carolina, uh, Camp Lejeune. So that's what's up. A happy new year to you, Gene. Thanks for coming through. 
uh, TC, Colorado. Man, y'all stay wow. in some cold, some cold places. So we just had like the craziest uh, winter. We haven't had a winter. Last year it snowed here around this time. It was freezing in Texas where we're at. We're like 45 minutes from Houston, um, just to give you an idea where we're at. But the last two days have been freezing and it's it just happened within like a couple hours. So we're trying to, you know, now we got our little hoodies and beanies on, but it, this is cold enough. We're good. Yeah, it hasn't even been like legit cold. It's been yeah. like, it'll be cold for like a day or two and then it'll get back hot. Mm -hmm. um, is Jose right? Yep. Jose Detroit, D in the building. Hey, I'm a big a big fan of Big Sean. He's from Detroit, oh, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, appreciate that. Happy New Year to you. It's, it's a new year. I always get excited about the new year. How do you feel about the new year, Kimberly? Good and bad. No, I'm kidding. Uh, mostly good. I mean, it's positive. It's a it's a new journey, new you know beginnings, new everything. So yeah. I like that. You're closing a chapter, starting a new one. Yeah, that's what I, I pretty much think the same thing about the new year. It's like a new chapter. It's a new beginning. It's pretty much like, I feel like you can start over, right? Mm -hmm. Because keep in mind, not everybody has great years all the time, right? Sure. This year was, how would you say this year was overall? last year for us or what? just in general uh it's kind of like man it wasn't the best yeah it was like right i don't so, know so going into this new year it's like okay we can start fresh yeah. start over for sure. um so that's what i like about the new year more recent to build in nashville tennessee oh cool that's what's up happy new year man uh Kurt said he thought it would be hot um in it's the summer hot. it's hot it's super hot in the summer we haven't really had a, a winter though like we were saying um, yeah. So it has been hot for sure. Yeah. Uh, Chase said, "Happy New Year!" Happy New to Year! You too. Appreciate that, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to be on here, man. I just, I love getting on here. This is a new year. I'm looking forward to the growth this year with my channel. My channel grew like crazy. Why do I keep looking at the mic? My channel grew like crazy last year. I think a big uh, role in that was, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, like the lockdown and stuff because people oh, yeah. couldn't get out like i seen my channel spike um so I, I got some crazy growth last year i'm excited for this year i'm gonna be trying a lot of new stuff mm -hmm. like i said we're introducing the a train and kimbo show um i'm gonna be experimenting with new content uh i'm just excited man i'm just excited um we got justin in the building what's up justin naples florida 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 that's what's up we think about oh. that. Come on, Florida. I love Florida. I like Destin. You want to go to Florida, right? I love Florida. I've been to Florida. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we said what's up to everybody. I hope all the Ninja Watchers, everybody said what's up. So we're gonna get into um, client communication first. Like I said, we're also doing a Q and A. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat, and uh, we will get to those questions um, later on. If you have questions about what we're talking about, feel free to. Drop those questions in the chat. You can drop whatever in the chat, as long as it ain't negative, nothing crazy. Um, it's cool with me. Um, we're gonna hop into that. Let me get back into these comments, man. Y'all showing me love, so we gotta. I gotta yeah. shout y'all out. J Vibes, you remember J Vibes? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, finally made it. Hey, that's what's up, J Vibes. I remember you from last time, man. Happy New Year. Cassandra in the building. Happy New Year, Baton Ooh, Rouge. Where's I wanna, Baton Rouge? I want to go Alabama? there. Alabama. No. Out, what? New Orleans. New Orleans. Oh. <laughs> Chill, chill. <laughs> J Vibes watching uh, from South Korea. Whoa, oh, wow. South Korea. Are you in the military or something? That's awesome. Yeah, South Korea. That is far. Sorry, something's in my eye. Uh, Diggs, what's up, man? Happy uh, New Year. He said, Ray Brooklyn, NY, NY in the building. Uh, prior service, USMC. That's what's up. That's what's up. I served with the Marines. Uh, like I said, Camp Lejeune, uh, stationed there, deployed twice. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's up. Started watching last year because some of the things I was going through and pursuing pursuing business uh, from my hobby was rough. You spoke on struggles and triumphs. Mm. That's what's up, man. I'm I'm happy to have you here, man. A fellow um, Marine veteran in here. That's what's up. He said he likes that. Um, Cassandra said, "LOL." <laughs> okay, we're gonna get into client communication because we have we we have the yeah drum roll. I need the stream, the stream deck so I can do the sound right. effects. Um, client communication. I, I got the expert over here. I'll be honest with y'all. Kimbo is um, the main person that talks to clients. I do it sometimes, but Kimbo is the one that is actually taking these people from a, um, what do you call it? Inquiry 
to a booked client. So she's the one that is booking clients that we get. So uh, I want to bring Kimba on so she could talk about that. We're going to get into it in a second. And if you're watching the replay, hashtag team replay. Um, like I said, feel free to drop your questions. I will get, we will get to them eventually. Um, J Bob said, happy new year to you, brother. Um, and you have uh, military life. Oh, okay. I got some new photos for y'all though. That's what's up, man. Send me, uh, the photos. Um, Adrian Lard photo on Instagram. Hawaii, oh, Frank, ooh. that's what's up, man. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. I've, I've like stopped there when I was in the military, like travel and stuff, but, um, want to go there for like vacation. I heard it's expensive in Hawaii. I heard that too. Yeah. Uh, J Vibes also got some new Godox gear as well. AD 200 Pro. Okay. I like that. I like that. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of Godox. So I like to see that. Okay. So we're going to um, transition this to um, client communication. So why client communication is an integral, integral, I can't even say it right, part of booking clients. You want to start this off, Kimbo? Why is it just like how big of a role does good client communication play in so, um, booking clients in, in customer service too? Um, so I would say it's just like anything else. They're coming to you because they want a service, right? So it's just like with anything else you want to be, um, you know, yourself. So it's important because you're going to have these people from the beginning to the very end. You're hoping that y'all vibe, you know, you don't want to say anything crazy at first, you know, uh, again, they're coming to you. So don't be nervous. Obviously you got something they want, you know, to do or have. Um, but it, it's very important. I'd say, um, communication as far as, you know, responding, things moving, responding, effect you. Oh, I can't say, look, there you got me uh, stuttering. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Responding. Yes. What he just said, because obviously I can't say it. I try to get back to people immediately. That's like my number one. Don't break thing. it all down right oh, now. Oh, oh, sorry. She's she gonna break it all sorry, down. Guys. We we gotta ease into this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's gonna just drop everything. <laughs> hey, Courage, yeah, we could do uh some critiques in the future. Um, would you be down to do that? Yeah. Like photo critiques, yeah. Uh Frank said it is expensive in Hawaii. Okay. Um Cooley said uh she's from or he, he, she, he. Cooley, he, okay, sorry. I think, I would think <laughs> um, from Indiana. That's what's up. So <coughs> client communication how is y'all's client communication if you are booking clients um or starting a business or have a business how would you say your client communication is when i say client communication um it's you know when the person reaches out that type of communication communication excuse me during um the lead up to the session after the session um how would you say your client communication is so drop that in the chat we're going to be talking about client communication right now i want to know what are your struggles with client communication um maybe something's working for you maybe you found that something is working something is not working what is not working um because we want to help y'all with that all right so i caught up to the um the chat so i guess we'll roll into i'm trying to think where we could go with this um this was kind of like last minute too. We really just wanted to get on here to holler at y'all. Um, and we're happy, excited about the new year, but um, okay, let's talk about consultations. So how long have we been doing consultations? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Maybe like three years. Why did we even start doing consultations? Um, I'm trying to remember. Like, I'll what be, was that? I'll be honest. What was that thing that made us transition um, to doing consultations because it wasn't something that we always did it was something that we transitioned mm -hmm. into doing but i can't remember why um if it's a if it's like a wedding or an event you want to make sure you get all your ducks in a row you want to make sure you're a good fit with the people or a person whoever you're working with i think it's very important to meet face to face because an email text call sometimes it can be taken the wrong way it might not always work that way but it might be you know flowing great but there's a few times where it's just like, eh, I don't know about this person. So I think it's very important sometimes to just say, hey, you know what? Let's meet at Starbucks. And that way, you know, and, and, break we're, the seal. and we're also talking about like just video consultations. Oh, yeah. A consultation does not have to be in person. Um, we pretty much do them for um, events. Mm -hmm. We've actually done them for portrait sessions, too. Mm -hmm. like with engagements and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we mainly do them for weddings and events. I feel like when you're booking something like that, that requires a lot of communication, a lot of back and forth. I think, I, I just think if you don't do the consultation, 
it's just not something's gonna go wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you want to elaborate especially, on? That? Especially when they're spending that much and investing so much into you and your business. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, think about it from your point of view. Uh, I would say that for a second. Um, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, would you go and buy that camera without going to look at reviews, go holding the camera? Maybe even you know, talk to somebody. Maybe even talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, you're not just going to go and randomly buy it. You know, you're not going to go and do that because you're obviously spending a lot of money. So it's the same thing. It's investing. Um, yeah, I like what my wife said. And I see y'all stuff. We're going to get to that. And to add on to that, um, like you said, a lot of this stuff, something that has helped me, and not just with photography, photography business, because I do other stuff too. I, I freelance. I get clients, talking to clients daily. Um, picture putting yourself in the client's shoes, right? So a lot of people have blocks when it comes to purchasing something. So what are those blocks? Um, it could it could be price, right? It could be a big block that people have is they don't want to get scammed, mm. right? So that's where a consultation. Um, you know, talking to somebody on a phone can kind of ease their mind now. Okay. This is a real person. Um, I don't feel iffy about this purchase anymore. So it, I know that's kind of to, to some people, it may be basic, but some that something as simple as that can get somebody to potentially invest in you mm-hmm. because it's like, I know this is a real person. I talk to them. I can kind of see how their personality is. It's hard to judge a person's personality oh, just yeah. through email. You want to kind of elaborate? I was going to say, it's just like I said a minute ago, things can be taken a wrong way. And again, you want to make sure you're clear on whatever it is that, you know, I don't know, maybe they didn't answer some things, you know, face to face or, you know, like he was saying in video calls, you're going to get whatever you're asking for. You're going to get it answered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to transition um, back into this chat. I'm liking this talk though, because uh, client communication, I would even say that's our something that kind of separates us from other people. Mm. I see a lot of photographers that um, talk about this and I see people talking about like standing out. How can I stand out? Mm -hmm. And something that, excuse me, has helped us is I think we used to just think in terms of photos, equipment, what can we do from that aspect? But when you transition that to, okay, my process, how can I stand out in my process? The process starts as soon as the client reaches out, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I stand out during that period of communication? The session, after the session. Client communication um, is is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Um, All right, let's get back in this chat. Like I said, y'all can drop questions um, about this stuff or if you're struggling with client communication, maybe how to get people on the phone, whatever it is, um, y'all can let us know about that in the chat. Um, Can you read that, Kimo? What answers? Uh Uh-huh. What incentives do you offer to get them to come into the door? Okay, uh, so Cooley said, what incentives? Do you mean just in general or do you mean um, like getting them on the phone? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just trying to see exactly what he means. Um, Kurt said, well, I struggle with people um, agree with a contract each time with weddings. It's like people are afraid to sign. Please help. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Kim, okay. you want to? So as soon as I, uh, let's just say uh, someone reached out about a wedding, um, first thing I want to do again is go ahead and email or call, text, whatever, very fastly, um, get everything answered if they have anything, or if you have any questions, ask, and then immediately uh, hop on the phone as as soon as possible as far as, you know, hey, can you talk um, tomorrow evening or something? The quicker you can get somebody on the phone, the better. Yes. And then, uh, oh, okay, cool. So I had a great time talking to you. I think we're a great link together or whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. And then I'd go ahead and send them a proposal back. Um, Again, um, when we send contracts or anything like that, we always have a date set on there. So give them a little bit of time. You know, you don't want to rush them to sign that day, but have a timeline on there. What are you talking about to where they have to sign the contract? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a good point. Um, like my wife said about, um, to courage's question about getting them to sign a contract is to putting a, um, a time limit on it. Mm-hmm. So you have like yes. a week to sign this into, we even do that for, to take payments for retainers. Yes. But, right. But see, this is some, and we do these things for a reason when you don't do that type of stuff. So it, it doesn't push people enough to actually take action. Right. So you have to speak on that too. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So when you don't do stuff like that, not saying you have to do it, but it does help people take action. Right. Mm -hmm. 
this is something that we've learned. Kimbo could probably want to talk about that. Oh, I was just going to say, also, when you're um, doing that time limit thing, it's good to follow back up. People get busy. People have kids. People have lives. So, hey, Kimberly, um, I just want to go over the contract I sent you, proposal I sent you. Um, did you have any questions? Do you want to move forward? You know, kind of not, again, you don't want to be too pushy, but don't be afraid to call, text, you know, email them back because people do get busy. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a whole nother thing. Like, um, if you're not following up with people, I can't sit up here and say we do it every single time, but we try to. Yes. Um, you know, you could be losing out on people because, and it's not because like, you may think, okay, I sent them a message. They never responded. It could be that they just got busy. You know, people get busy. We get busy. Uh, I know personally I get busy and I'll not respond to something for a whole freaking two weeks, you know? So something to keep in mind. Um, Cooley said make uh, contact with person. Does that kind of clarify? You get what he, contact with person. so he had so basically asked before, you're saying, how do you just book someone? How do you offer to get them in uh, to come in the door and make contact? I think he's just talking about like uh, getting a client. Um, how do you get them in the door? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let Kimbo say her opinion. I was just going to say, um, again, that's when we kind of just move forward with the phone call. Um, I like to talk to them on the phone. That way they can hear me. An email can be taken. Uh, it's kind of one of those things. It can be taken a million different ways. I'd rather move faster and people, you know, who has time to sit at a desk all day and email back and forth? I mean, we personally don't. I'd rather just move forward very fastly with a phone call. So that's kind of how I would say. Even something else like you could in your contact form on your website, if you have a website or maybe you have a social media with, I think, Instagram, you can put your contact information. Mm -hmm. But specifically for the website, one of our questions is phone number. That's for a reason. So we could even be a little bit more. I guess aggressive in a sense, and just call the client back. So they sent the the message on the website, excuse me, asking about a wedding or whatever. We have their phone number. We could call them back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know some people are not really a lot of people don't want to talk on the phone. Um, it's really not that bad, but that could um what's the word? Make or break help you stand out from somebody else because you called the, the client yeah. versus somebody else. I me personally, if a client called me. Um, about a service that I inquired about and pretty much broke down what I wanted to hear, I'd be more likely to book. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that he he called me shows confidence, mm -hmm. right? So I would think oh, this person really, you know, they're confident with what they do and the service that they offer. So that's just my opinion. Um, big play. What's up, man? Uh, Happy New Year. He said, do you think area plays a role in booking clients? <laughs> like how you put it better on I me. Mean, um, I'd say yes and no, just depending on who you're reaching out to and what they're asking for, like what your niche is and what exactly you do. Because here, I mean, we're right by, we're, well, there's photographers everywhere. Um, and there's always going to be that. But I feel like, once again, you've got to find your way. How can you be different? Why would someone want to book you? It doesn't matter how many weddings you've done. It doesn't matter, you know, if you've only done one, I think. It just depends on the person. That's what I would say. Um, I don't think area plays a, a role in um, booking clients. I, I think it's things that, like, photographers say. I'm not saying you're saying this, but people can say, oh, it's the, I, I see that a lot in groups. I follow groups. It's the area I'm in. That's why I can't book people. It's a small town. I've seen people in small towns that make six figures. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the excuse that we can easily lean on. Oh, it's, it's a small town. Oh, nobody wants to pay. Nobody values here. Nope. Nope. You have to reflect back on yourself, right? Which is the hard part to do. Look at, look at your offering, right? Look at your branding. Look at your messaging. Is that stuff all the best that it can be? right? What can be tweaked within your process? Maybe it's your process, your, your follow-up process when they reach out, you know, that's the hard truth. That's the hard pill to swallow right there. You know, that you have to reflect back on what you're doing. Maybe it could even be that you may need to improve in your work too. You know, I would say you can even scout places like, I don't know, um, go out different places. Maybe like he's saying, maybe it is a small town where, you know, it is very, very small and there's only so many, you know, anyway, go to different places, scout what you're looking for, um, be different, you know, find your way to be stand outing. I guess you could say, I can't explain it. Yeah. 
You get what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope. I, I don't think, man, I, I could make a whole, that could be a whole nother topic. I don't think area plays a role. Um, I think you could have areas where it may be a little bit easier to, you know, cause it's a bigger area. So yeah. there's more opportunity, but mm-hmm. still like, even if the, if the service you provide or the product or whatever, isn't something that people want, it don't matter how big the area is. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it, it don't matter. So that kind of, you know, debunks that whole thing. Uh, how do you show samples? So we'll look, Kimbo. So we've done two different ways. We recently did it a little different. Um, you're talking about editing, right? Are they talking about? They're talking about samples like, uh, like uh, wall art or albums. Oh, um, on our website, we have a little bit of everything. Um, we try to talk about it as well. When I first make that phone call to talk to them, I immediately am asking questions on what they're asking um, to book for. If it's a wedding or you're interested in certain things and say they only book so much and then the wedding is over, you give whatever they're asking for back and you still feel like you could upsell always, always, always. Hey, I really think your, you know, your photos look great. I think they would look great in an album. You know, you can always upsell too. So I would say that. You show them consultation. You didn't talk about that. What do you mean? Showing albums. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So as far as samples, um, you could do that through a consultation, video consultation, if you don't want to do it in person. Mm -hmm. Even it could be something you just bring to the session, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Hey, after the session, walk them over to the car. These are some some printed products and, um, you know, uh, wall art offerings that I have and just kind of explain those. Um, it, it could be simple. I would not um, don't overthink it, overthink that. Like you could simply bring it to the session. Right. Bring it to the consultation. Yeah. Show it during the video consultation. Um, but what, if you are trying to sell like prints, products or albums or something like that, you have a way better chance of. Um, getting them to buy that stuff if you could show it to them yes. and they can get it in their hands um yeah that helped us sell our first album because we bought it to the consultation right. and they got to see it mm-hmm. experience how it would feel to see their photos in an album and to feel the quality of it you can't mm-hmm. see that on a website I, you mm-hmm. can't feel that just with me putting a picture of it sending you a picture of it you have to have it in your hands mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so the effect is stronger that way um J Vob said, I do struggle a bit with new places now and then, though, but I have been trying uh, the free service approach like a one time thing. LOL. I literally did this for the holiday parties I recently did. What do you think? Excuse me. What do you think about the free thing? Let's see what Kimbo thinks about free. Free is good, but free is bad (laughs) because it's just like mini sessions or anything like that. People want cheap. People want, you know, whatever it is. So I would say know your worth. Whatever that means to you. If you feel like, hey, that helped me this time, hey, by all means, go ahead. But I would say be very careful with it because it can also be kind of attracting those free people. So, Ooh, eh. okay. Kimbo with the jams. It can attract free people. <laughs> she said free people. <laughs> Did you mean <laughs> you to say cheap? Cheap people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Free is okay. But be strategic with it. Oh, you like that? You like that? (laughs) When you when you're doing free, you have to know what's the intention behind it. What's the big? What's the bigger picture of free? Mm -hmm. Right? Am I using this to build my portfolio? Am I using the right clients that I want to attract? You see what I'm saying? Like we made the mistake of doing free, doing the wrong stuff for free, stuff Mm -hmm. that didn't really help us in the future. Right. Not really thinking about the bigger picture and the future. What do we what what niche do we really want to focus on in the future? What type of clients do we want to attract? See, because when we were new, we just focused on any client. Any. But see, that's a horrible mindset Bad. because it's really setting you up for failure in the future. Right. And that is just real talk. hundred percent, because we reached a part where we struggled big time because of what we did in the beginning. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um. So so you got to think about free um being strategic with it and looking at the bigger picture and also thinking about the future um you can even do like where you um sorry my hair is a little mess um you can even do where maybe you tell them something along the lines of hey i'll do this if you do this kind of thing so Ooh. it's kind of like yeah. you know a win-win services. exactly because yeah. yeah. it's a it's a mind thing at the end of the day think about it it's really a mind thing yeah 
sales tactic? Sean said, uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's more about marketing. I'm in a small market and it's not bad. That's that's 100 true, Sean. Like it, the, the the size of the place does not matter. It's like it it doesn't matter. Um, Cooley said he likes face to face. Sean said, uh, by the way, um, Adrian, love your channel. Found your wall back instantly. Sub. Oh, I like Aww. to see that. Appreciate that, Sean. Thank you, man. I'm glad to have you uh, be a part of this community. Um, he said, what are your thoughts on sending a quick text when? inquiries come in emails go into the spam folder Ooh. absolutely and sometimes i even do that at work um say i get an email uh or whatever it is and i'll say hey barbara or whoever barbara. Uh, <laughs> why i gotta be barbara <laughs> i don't know why i can't be like tiffany or something. anyways barbara <laughs> i Karen, Karen? shut up i got your email or i uh i received your e something you know save it so that way you can word it perfectly that's what i would say um so you can have it for the next time but say hey barbara i received your email today um i'm at work right or you don't even have to say you're at work just say i received it i'll get back with you later this evening or something just so you're acknowledging the fact that they've sent it you got it and you aren't ignoring them because some people do care about that too like oh my gosh it's been a couple hours what is he doing because think about it these people i'm gonna be honest with you if they're not in our shoes our shoes as in you know photography people um they don't care. They don't care what you're they doing. They don't care about what they're getting from they, you. They don't care if you got a million kids. They don't care what you got going on at home. They want what they're asking for. So make sure that you're acknowledging that and saying like, hey, I'll be with you later. But text can, I, I'm kind of one of those weird things. Unless I've already booked the client, that's when I can text later. Um, Cause texts are good, but they're also, you know, you want to make sure that they're, you're not doing it all the time. Right. Depending on what it is. J Vibes, uh, he said, I like to engage with folks as well. I use my business card as a conversation starter. It's one of the ones that you tap the phone ah. uh, right now, and I'm still learning to go through. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I've seen those. Where those are cool. Yeah, those are dope. Um, Cooley said, I have uh, done fundraisers for charities to get my face out there. Yes. That's a great. That's a great. Um, that's great. That, I mean, <laughs> Just getting yourself out there, it's its so many things you could do to get yourself out there. I think with photographers, it's just who's willing to do those things. Mm -hmm. Like, we know what we to do to get ourselves out there. It's like we just don't want to do it or it may be hard to do it. There may be some anxiety. There may be, um, you know, you're just nervous to talk to people. Um, but even, even something I've done at work, I network at work, right? Mm -hmm. Not even like, just talking about photography, it's it's not really, that's not really, you don't have to do that to network. You know what I'm saying? I think people get confused about that too. It's just talking to people, yes. you know, getting to know people. That's how that stuff can add up later down the road because it's like, okay, I, I know this Adrian guy, or maybe that person searches you up on social media. People do that. Mm -hmm. Let's say you talk to somebody at work. Oh, you know, maybe I'll see it with the social media or something, right? And they're like, oh, he does photography. Oh, he does family photography. Wait. I need a family photography shoot. I need family photography. You see what I'm saying? Like that's how networking, part of networking can kind of come together to, to build your For sure. thing. What do you, your no, thoughts I agree. on networking? You, you're the network we, person. No, I'm saying we've gotten <laughs> bookings from like just talk, you know, people oh, yeah. we know and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a, a face to the business you're in. Yeah. yeah. She, like she can't speak on it. <laughs> uh what's up chris happy new year man uh he said how long did you practice before you start charging clients we didn't we immediately started charging <laughs> we didn't practice. i mean we practiced a little on each other not really we was already doing it but we were yeah so we were already practice. doing it well i guess so, so about yeah. how long do you think mm, what well we year, have been so so we started we were doing like um social media content so kimbo would take pictures of me because i had like a fitness brand so she was doing like videos um taking pictures of me we were doing that for years though yeah so i guess that would be practice but it wasn't like it's different with photography yeah. see we didn't understand everything about settings and light you know what i'm saying we didn't have a photography understanding about that you know what i'm saying so um we we did hop into it quick yes. because uh those first couple of sessions like even that engagement session with your friend it was it was it wasn't like horrible, but it was it wasn't good. It was a little rough, but you can still put those compared to other people's and be like, whoa, okay. Yeah. 
He said, yes, help me with upselling, please. There's many things you can do with this. Many, many, many things. I can't, I don't know what Adrian's allowing me to say and not say. I might get cut off. But <laughs> um, it's it's just one of those things, whatever works for you, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. Again, uh, bringing, like he said, physical products to actually see, touch, feel, look at is important. Um Maybe prints. Prints are big, too. Um, everybody has a Walgreens, CVS, Walmart they can go to. But how can we get them to buy photos from, you know, us? That's a challenge. You know, it, yeah. it's it's something I think everybody has trouble with. And don't beat yourself up about, up, ugh, up about that either. Yeah. The, the easiest thing you can upsell is extra photos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I talk about that a lot of my videos because it's, it's literally the easiest thing to upsell. It's so easy. Cap off a certain amount of images. Don't give away too much. Upsell the rest. Mm. It's, it's literally that easy. If you if you know how to shoot good photos, and they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be great. It's just in good exposure. It's in focus, good expressions, right? Yeah. Capture the moments. If you can do that, deliver a bomb album, right? I mean, gallery. They're going to mo most likely buy more nine times out of ten. And right, we've had but that see, happen. but see, you have to have it set up right and shoe proof or something like that. Yeah. Well, you could just take it through like pavement or whatever, but it helps when you have it set up right in something like um, an online gallery software, which I'll talk about a lot, like shoe proof because it has the upsells, it makes it so easy. See, that's the thing like, are you making it easy for them to buy extra? Mm. Right, see, that's something I've learned from even, even another business I do, right, like freelancing. Am I making it easy for them to upgrade, right? People one one easy. one way I'm, I'm not making it easy is if I don't even have it to have it there to offer it to them, right? Yeah. So some of you may have um, not even have these things set up. So okay, you're losing out already, right? Um, that's that's the key. Are you making it easy for people to get these upsells? Mm -hmm. Even like just in regards to your business, are you making it easy for people to book with you? Are you making it easy for people to navigate through your site to see what you have to offer? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, I, I can talk about this all day. Like that, that plays a big part. Would you, yeah. would you agree? Absolutely. Like think, think people about, easy. think about a buying experience you've had. I've had bad buying experiences, right? I've also had good ones. Mm -hmm. And you know, a trend that I see in those good buying experiences, they made it easy for me, Right. They broke down everything I needed to know. They told me where this was at, this and that, everything. It was like, man, this is just too easy. Take my money. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Cooley said, are you doing albums in Lightroom? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I edit in Lightroom and Photoshop. Kimbo does not edit. I tried to teach her before, but she was just like, H-E-L-L, -L, no. No, <laughs> it's not my thing. Curtis said, question for Kimbo. What type of photography uh, do you do? Or perhaps you enjoy. Dum dum dum. No, um, I actually did not ever, 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 ever in a million years want to do weddings. But someone right here encouraged us to do it, and it's actually became one of I would say one of the easiest <laughs> things. What? Right. She like it now. That's funny. one of the funny easiest how that, things. Funny how that works. Because as funny. long as you get the biggest you know, parts. parts, moments, capturing those type things. It is so cool because there's so much. I'm a people person, so all those people are so cool to me. I'd say the, the biggest struggle, not struggle, I'd say the thing we do not enjoy the most about weddings is maybe groups because you are working with several different people um, that you don't know what you're getting into. But, 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 that's when you take charge. It's when you are, you know, the mastermind person. But I would say weddings for sure. Um, I'm a second shooter. Like? Huh? What else you like? That's really the main thing. What else? You don't like nothing else? Not really. I'm not. I don't really like kids personally. <laughs> I girl don't like nothing. <laughs> um, I would say uh, I like the studio ones we've done. Studio is fun. Yeah, but you don't really shoot them. Though. I don't shoot them though. You like shooting help... seniors, don't you? Oh yeah, seniors are fun. Seniors are fun because they're younger. And they're kind of like clueless, so they're gonna do whatever. Like they're gonna do whatever, you know. They want to look good for the social media, so you know those are fun. I would say seniors and weddings for sure. Yeah. This girl act like she don't like nothing, but weddings <laughs> that is bogus. Uh, J Va said, "Thank you both for those uh, Thanks, gems." Thanks, ma'am. That's what he said. Uh, making you feel old, huh? Takes good money to buy good whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. 
He said, what about Billy? I think it was when we were ah. talking about names. Uh, Cooley said, do you watermark your stuff? Yes. Um, no, I, I don't. I used no. to. I, I don't anymore. It's just it's just another step I got to worry about. It's like people can even get the image that's watermarked, Photoshop the, the logo I'll out. That, yeah. It's just like people can do whatever on the Internet, you know. Uh, Cooley said he's never been shy. I cannot say that because I am definitely shy. Adrian is the shy one. Can you believe that? Yeah um perfect clips photography what's up man thanks for coming through happy new year you said what do you think about trade for print collaboration so that's like shooting with models tfp Ooh. what do you think what do i think yeah i'll put your answer um i think it's fine as long as you one have of course contract in writing whatever you're going to do and not do um yeah and the vibes are there with the person because sometimes you know oh sorry Maybe it depends on who reaches out first. I think when we've worked with models, we've we've reached out a few times where they were great. We've loved the people. We, we still communicate with them. And it was just a great uh, vibe. Great people um, would work with them again in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Um, but again, you we've made everything clear from the beginning and you you know who they are. You've researched who they are because sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they aren't what they seem to be. <laughs> you funny, man. TC said, do you sell digital as well as prints? And if yes, are the di digitals more expensive uh, because of the fact that they can print them on their own? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, okay. You said, do you sell digital as well as prints? Yes. Digitals are, are way more expensive, um, but our prints are expensive too. I don't know if Kimbo seen the recent um, price increases I made, but yeah, prints are expensive, but our digitals are pretty expensive. So I have them to where it makes sense for them to get the, the digital package if they're getting an upsell, right? Because the single digital is, it's too much. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's priced very high. So it, it, it moves them over to that package, which seems like more value for them. So I'm moving them where I want them to go. You know what I'm saying? That's something you got to keep in mind too. Like with, you know, um, your website, um, just your sales process too. Like, are you moving them throughout that process and guiding them where you want them to go? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Cooley said, are you doing a uh, background in lights at reception? I think they taught me. Okay. Um, I'm a second shooter. So whatever he's doing, I'm right behind him. I'm his right hand man slash woman. You get it? Um, yes. So I'm doing whatever he's doing. We're together the wedding day. Um, uh, but I do help him with whatever we need, but we both take photos the whole day. Um, Durante, thanks for coming through. Um, happy new year. What are your thoughts on smug mug? I've heard of that before. Is that an online gallery? I, I can't, I don't know exactly what it is. I've heard of it before, but I can't remember exactly what it is. Chris, what's up, man? Thanks for coming through. He said, uh, thanks for your video series on off-camera flash. I've only been shooting since June of 2020, uh, 2021. That was a really helpful series. That is great to hear, Chris. I'm glad to hear that that was helpful. Um, this year, I'm going to be pumping out a lot more videos on off-camera flash, so you can expect to see that. I'm also coming out with a course, um, which is a great time to plug that. <laughs> Was that smooth or not smooth? Yeah, it was. Um, so join the wait list for my off-camera flash course for beginners. Oh. It is not it has not come out yet, but if you want to join the wait list, potentially get nice goodies, extra bonuses, all that stuff. Um, link is in my description. So this um course is not gonna be crazy priced. Um, if you don't want to get the course, you can check out the free content. So it's up to you. <laughs> uh all right. Cooley said you can copyright in metadata. Um, okay. Uh, J-Vibe said, I swear y'all energy be getting me uh, pumped up, literally about to end my workout on a great note. I love to work hear day. that. Work day. Oh, work day. I thought I said workout. See, I'm thinking about working out <laughs> because I did not work out today and I'm supposed to. Um, so I love well, to hear you. that. Appreciate that. You always bring great vibes too, which... The name J Vibe. Oh, they're talking me. Dang. What? I thought you were talking about me. Yeah, you bring good vibes. <laughs> I'm just too. kidding. Thank you for that. Um, 
J Vibe said, sign up your boy for the course. Hey. hey, I like to see it. I like to see it. I've seen a lot of y'all um joining the wait list. Um, so I like to see that. I'm excited about the course. Um, I've been working on it. So I've been doing the text portion of it, but it's not only gonna be text, it's gonna be videos too, which I'm actually supposed to be doing with Kimbo. What? She don't she don't even know that. <laughs> uh the instructional videos. So we'll, I'll probably be getting to that um pretty soon. So I'm excited about it. Durante said, Happy New Year. And yes, it is. My wife and I use it for our clients out here in San Antonio. That's what's up. I used to live in San Antonio. Um, it's less work versus uh, Squarespace. Hmm. Okay. We use WordPress for our website. Kimbo don't even touch that stuff. Not but... that great, that stuff, guys. <laughs> Just here for the talks. Okay. So we're going to transition um, to talk more about consultations because we're real big. Uh, scoot over. Come on. We're real big on consultations. Um, like I said, we're doing a Q&A. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, if you're on the replay, you could drop comments if you have any questions about anything. Um, man, as soon as I say that, y'all start sending stuff. <laughs> um, what is the best way to find fashion models? So we don't shoot like fashion models. So I would not not know the answer to that. I'm pretty sure you can find them on Instagram, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, just look up Instagram, look at... Um, hashtags. Yeah, hashtags. That's a good one, too. Um, Sean said, now that you've been in the YouTube space uh, a bit, what advice would you give a photographer, videographer that is looking to get into YouTube? Oh, I love to talk about that stuff. That's actually something that I want to put on the channel more, not to overshadow my other content, but I do want to start weaving in a little bit of content about other stuff because I feel like I have a lot to offer and talk oh, about. Even like making money outside of photography, just being a creative in general, it's a lot of different ways um, you can make money. Um, but he said, what advice would you give a photographer, videographer that is looking to get into YouTube? I would say don't make... Uh, don't make selfish content. That's something that I see a lot of people do. They just make content about what they want to do, right? And I'm not saying that I don't make content about, you know, what I want to do, but is what you want to do valuable to people, right? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind if you're starting a YouTube channel. If anybody on here is thinking about starting YouTube, does it offer value to people? Are you answering specific questions that people have about stuff? You see, my content answers a lot of questions and a lot of struggles that people deal with. So I'm doing that intentionally. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not just making random content. I'm making content that I know people are looking for. So I think that's like one of the biggest pieces of advice I would give to somebody that's new is make sure you're making content that people are actually looking for that actually has value and that can actually help somebody. Um. J Bob said, oh, I see. Uh, I always try to bring the positivity everywhere I go, even in the face of negativity. I like that. Mm, I like that. I like that. Uh, Courage said, Have you considered doing video by any chance? The both of you. I'm gonna answer that. Video for what? Oh, for um it's kind of one of those things where we we actually did for a while as far as what he was talking about, um, YouTube for his fitness stuff, but and that's how we got into it um however it's kind of a lot the day of with a lot going on when you're doing everything uh wedding. yeah so you're just talking about video in general oh like um any kind of client. we could do it it just depends on what it is. it's got to be the right fit for right now we just mainly our focus is on photography um but we can yes we haven't we haven't really pushed it like that um but that's something i definitely want to um dabble in a bit more Cause we do do video oh, sometimes, yeah. like even for freelance clients, we've mm -hmm. done like little videos and stuff. So we do it a little bit. It's just not something that we really, um, you know, put out there as far as what we offer. Um, but looking to change that. I was going to answer it real quick on um, the go back up just a little bit. Uh, perfect clips photography. When you're asking about the models again, I was going to say you can also put yourself out there um, maybe on like a story or something. Just say, hey, I'm looking for da 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 da. Um, again, maybe you can put uh, the location you're looking for or maybe an example, um, something like that. What the vibe you're going for, they might reach out to you as well. Sorry. Yep, that's a good place by Cooley too, Model Mayhem. So I would check out that. 
Um, even J Vibes giving some input. Fashion models go on Facebook. There are mm-hmm. groups up there. Um, seen some in uh, Korea, if that helps. Uh, appreciate that. That is true. Um, Sean said, uh, look up your city and model. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, he said, thanks. That was a gem. Oh, oh, no problem, man. I love talking about YouTube. So if y'all have any questions about like growing a um, a YouTube channel or um, even making money outside of um, photography, because a lot of photographers, man, um, that's our dog try to get in. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, y'all probably have a lot of skills that you can be monetizing right now. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll, I'll throw some stuff out there that I do um, besides YouTube. So I do, like I said, I do freelance work that, um, you know, graphic design. Um, What else do I do? I do a little bit of writing type stuff. Um, What else? I do consultations. Um, I do consultations for YouTubers. Mm -hmm. So people who are just starting on YouTube, I consult people who are starting on YouTube. Um, What else? It's it's so many different things you could do. Um, Facebook ads. That's something that I could really push. But. You know, I just haven't done it yet because I have that skill of knowing how to create ads and how to target specific things. Um, And these are all things that I've learned from just, you know, like starting like an online brand, uh, photography, um, just all the stuff I've been doing for all these years. You know what I'm saying? It's just all come together and I've learned how to like monetize all these different things and make money like multiple ways, like seven, you know, eight different income streams. Not saying I'm making a bunch of money with those, but, you know. $200 $200 a month consistently adds up. Why are you laughing? Oh, because you said, not that I'm making a lot. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to give the wrong impression. Like, I'm not, we're not rich or nothing, but no. do I make money consistently doing other stuff besides photography? Heck yeah, every single month. Um, Durante said, I actually came across your channel last week off of my main YouTube channel. This is my photography page. Oh, so we got some YouTubers in here. I like to see that, man. Don't be afraid to ask your YouTube questions. I've been on YouTube since 2016. I have like three channels, so I could talk about YouTube all day. Um, J Vibe said, if y'all ever get the free time, I threw some photos in your IG box. Okay, yeah, I'll check that out. Of course, check it out. Man, I'll be getting so many messages on Instagram, I cannot keep up. I am bad with messages. So if y'all message me on Instagram and I don't respond sometimes, it's not that I'm ignoring you. <laughs> um, Diggs86 said, I've been learning retouching the last 1.5 years. Would you recommend outsourcing images or doing it in-house? It's challenging models with ashy feet oh! and bad lace wig placements. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dang, I hope they're not watching. No, Dig, <laughs> Digs 86 with the quick roast. Oh my god. Let me tell you something though. I'm just gonna say something before you. I'm gonna just make it funny real quick. <laughs> we have had some of the worst Ooh. member teeth. Lord uh-huh. Jesus. It was like they just got done having the butteriest, buddy <laughs> talk. Popcorn. Oh my god. It's bad. It's really bad. I would say outsource that. If you can't get it, yeah, outsource it. <laughs> he said wigs. Not the ashy feet. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, sometimes I, I can relate, though, because that could be a lot of work. Because, like, the client. <laughs> and it'd be, like, stuff like that. It's like, okay, you knew that you were doing a photo shoot. And you're going to come to this photo shoot ashy? Can I speak on that real quick? That don't even make sense. I was going to say, too, don't be afraid. And this is for anybody. Um, God's honest truth. If you see, I, I even started bringing on, like, little scissors and, like, little stuff. Um, help, help them with their hair. You don't even have to touch them. Hey, can you fix your necklace? Hey, can you turn this around or whatever? Um, try to avoid those things so you won't have to do any editing later. So I'm a very detailed person. Any keys, any, you know, the people that does do this on um, wrist. Adrian really doesn't catch on because he's not female. But um, the wrist thing, that drives me insane. These are ponytail holders that people wear all the time. They are not bracelets. They are not supposed to be in a picture and on your wedding day, for sure not. So try to avoid those things by trying to, um, you know, do it while doing the, you know, you can't say you're ashy, but be like, can we just, you know. How you going to tell somebody, hey, I got some lotion in my camera bag. (laughs) We got to put this on before the shoot. 
You can't tell nobody that. Well, I mean, you can try to say something. She don't well. understand. But if you think about outsourcing, I would check out <laughs> Photographer's Edit. That's what I use. I love them. Um, Sean said, I see what you're saying now. We don't realize the skills that we have outside of the camera. Dope. Of course. That's the thing, man. Like, you know, I guess it depends on your goals, too. Like, what? Like, I'm a person that I look in the future a lot. I'm thinking about the future because I may not want to be uh, in the field doing photography 10 years from now. You know, that's the reality of this. I may want to switch more to online based type type stuff, whether that's coaching photographers with everything I've learned or, um, you know, it could even be like YouTube. Maybe I, maybe I want to mainly do YouTube. You see what I'm saying? So you have to think about like uh, the future and what you want to do. Um, <laughs> Jay Vile said, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Curry said, if you're doing a job at a club scene and you're working five hours, how much do you think you should get paid in general? Club scene? Yeah. Um, it just depends on well, what are they asking for? Um, what are, No, I'm saying like how many photos, how many like it's kind of really. Um, as far as like because <laughs> she playing, she playing. She said, what are they asking for? Um, as far as like any type of event or club, whatever, that's an event, right? I oh, guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the base of that pricing is is first gonna be term be determined off of how much am I trying to make from photography, right? Mm. What's gonna help me reach this yearly goal? That affects my overall pricing to gigs, right? If I don't know how I, how much I want to make a year, how do I know what to price? You know, I can't really price accordingly. So it starts there. And then as far as, you know, giving them that quote, I would first go with the hours. Like I would charge per hour. It's five hours, 150, 250 per hour, right? That gives me my base price. Then I could kind of add on based on other little stuff and, and, you know, input my time in there too, taxes, other little things, right? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But keep in mind when you're doing those things too, you're not just, let's say you you're you individually priced um retouching you know you don't just mm -hmm. want to price it at what it actually costs right let's say you outsource and that's 100 bucks yeah. you want to actually add on to that price too so you actually profit money um so that's something to think about yep <laughs> that's what i was laughing at dig said seriously though uh how can you dig digitally lotion some damn feet <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh man in my son voice he'd be saying that oh my god that's funny man Sergio, what's up, man? Thanks for coming through. Happy New Year. Uh, what advice would you give to a photographer attempting to start and integrate themselves into a new state they just moved to? Oh, great one. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. Let's see what you just share what you Um, think. Get out there more. Um, To start new, a new state, you said. Um, Like we were saying earlier, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, what makes yourself different? Um, Maybe... Put yourself out there as far as like, hey, I'm looking for da 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 da, and then go from there. It depends on what you're doing exactly, but I would say, you know, um, definitely cards, business cards. We still, I mean, they're still popular. I'd say anything like that. Um, what else? As far as the new state, I would um, do a lot of stuff that I and talk about. Like I would network. Like I said, I don't have to be talking. I would just go out try to meet people. That could even be at your job. You see what I'm saying? Like trying to, I work at a hospital. You know how many people are in a hospital? Like I can network so much more. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm usually just talking to people on the first floor. I could talk to people on the second, third, fourth, and fifth. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I would start there and I would also start, um, I mean, some people may disagree, but you could, I guess it depends on how strong your portfolio, portfolio, portfolio is. You could offer a couple new sessions um and kind of get your name out there with that getting those people to potentially promote you you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying in that actual state um so that's personally what i would do um dig said as a photographer i'm worried about um compositions poses expression and lighting by myself what's Oof. your thoughts on that it is a lot I, you know i do wonder how people do it by themselves but it doesn't mean it can't happen people a lot of people do it by themselves um, start off slow, take each section and, 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 you know, master it, you know, each time you're going to get better. 
you know, definitely look at the positives from it and go home, look at those photos. Cause we've beat, beat ourselves up several times. Um, Oh man, I should have did this different. I should have that. Right. Just slow down, look what you're doing, process it, and then go from there. Um, so definitely look at each, like I said, each thing and then go slow. I think what she's trying to say <laughs> is learn each thing individually, <laughs> right? And take it slow <laughs> instead of like, um, trying to learn every for me personally how i got better is i stopped trying to be great at everything, everything at one time yeah like i broke it down okay i need to get better at lighting i need to get better at posing kimbo can vouch for this yeah i literally how much did i focus on lighting when i said hey i need to get better at lighting i literally went all in 100 percent. yeah and then after that it's like okay i'm pretty proficient with that now i need to master posing that's what i focused on you see what i'm saying yeah. but it's so many different parts of photography like you said, composition, poses, expression, using the right lens, the lighting, off-camera flash, uh, uh, on-camera flash, camera settings, um, talking to the clients so they're not nervous, whatever. So you have to really break these things down and try to be at least proficient, somewhat proficient, um, you know, in these things like individually and then kind of moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. No flavor imaging. What's up, bro? Happy New Year, man. He said, have you ever thought about incorporating video with your photo biz? Any advice for someone who wants to add video to their biz? Um, Yeah, it's something we do a little bit of. We don't really promote it, though. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, we've done a wedding video, but we don't really promote that to um, new clients a lot because it's not really what we want to focus on right now mm -hmm. right we've done a couple videos outside of um weddings and stuff like that but it's not really something that we market and promote like that mm -hmm. um the thing is okay if you're trying to incorporate something new into any type of business i think you can't go wrong in the beginning with doing free work yeah. right and and I, I think it's okay for sure because you're trying something new you're trying to incorporate something new. So why not get some practice and work with some new clients and just offer them, you know, something for free because you're trying to get something kicks something up and running. Mm -hmm. So you may have to do a couple of free gigs, right? Plus these gigs are going to give you the chance. These free gigs are going to give you the chance to book clients in the future because you're building your portfolio. Now, when a new client approaches or you approach another client, you have something to show them. Versus if you're like, oh, I just want to hop into this and charge two thousand dollars, you ain't got nothing to show them. So how you how you gonna how you gonna win that sale? It's gonna be hard. I'm not saying you can't do it. So that's what I would do. I know everybody's different. Um, who wants to add that? As far as adding to your business, start there. Build your portfolio and then add it to your business. As far as like marketing that, pitting it on your website, and also telling clients about that service. Mm. Maybe even reaching out to past clients. Hey. I know that you only know me for photography, but I, in 2022, we just added this new service. So if you have any video needs, reach out to us. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So that's that's what I would do. Um, Sergio said, is there any legal actions slash homeowner insurance changes or anything that you said um, do strategically to your home as a studio, especially since I just closed on a house and plan to use my garage? Anything about that? Don't you have, isn't that a part of the insurance part, I thought? No, he's just saying, like, is there legal actions um, slash homeowner insurance changes um, that we do because we use a home studio? Um, No, we have insurance on all of our stuff, though, and we do, of course, have our homeowner's insurance as well. Um, I wouldn't say so. I, if you're going to use your garage like that, I would be very careful, though. Um, maybe mm -hmm. don't change anything around because I, I know that for sure is I don't know what state you're in, but yeah. every state's different on some of that. I know those people to talk to, like, to if you want to change stuff, you talk to me about it. Before. Oh, like your like uh, the city. The yeah. The county you live yeah, in, the it's city different, you live like, in. Rules and regulations for different areas. Yeah. Um, or you may not be able to do certain things um to your garage or maybe to the backyard these are kind of things that me and kimbo have actually talked about because i've thought about um i've even considered getting a shed to put in the backyard to do mm -hmm. photography and building that up but of course you can't just do that you have to talk to the city and see if you can do it i'm pretty sure some people just do it but i mean you could probably get in trouble right yes. <laughs> um 
Dave White said, how do you find models to shoot if you are just beginning, um, if you have exhausted shooting your family and friends? I will go to IG. IG is the best place to go um, if you're trying to find models. Like some people even put in the chat, um, searching up hashtags, um, college station models, Houston models, um, Colorado models. And then once you find these people, you know, you got to shoot your shot. Got to shoot the DM. Even if you don't feel like, uh, I know everyone is asking for specifically models, but say there is, I don't know, a makeup artist that you know or a person that you know that's really pretty or whatever. They may have access to those. Yes, or you can even reach out to people like that. Uh, hey, you know these people, um, do you know anyone? I'm looking for this kind of vibe or this kind of um, you know idea I have, and maybe they can you know give you ideas of who to look out for. Yeah, that's a great point too, like accessing people's um, audiences, right? Mm -hmm reaching out think think about who that client um kind of relates to right so we could access the audience of a wedding dress store you see what i'm saying because their clients are potential brides you see what i'm saying so maybe going on the instagram following the brides um i don't recommend like really just dm and somebody straight up like that but it, you see what i'm saying like you could just even just kind of scout and 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 see um what they have within their audience um, soul vision photography said what are some great ways for me to get into product photography and reaching out to businesses through social social media practice 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 at home do your own thing adrian's shot of my shoes uh we've done food pics stuff like that maybe even go to a restaurant take some pictures of someone's stuff like you know order sushi like he loves sushi they're very um colorful you can tell them stuff about like that opportunity we had we never did it but yeah um so a while back um same thing our favorite uh place that we'd get um chinese food at and stuff anyway we had some stuff come out we had a camera at with us like i don't even why did we have it i don't even know but anyway he took pictures um we went home he made sure they were beautiful whatever and through the pandemic people were asking what you know where are some good restaurants or da da we pulled up those pictures and we posted them. The owner reached out to us and actually was like, hey, thank y'all so much. I would love to work with y'all, da, 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 da. So it was just kind of cool. So again, that was just because we had it on hand. Um, so even doing that, taking your um, camera, you never know when you're going to need it or when you're going to, the randomest times, you know, like we said, uh, just I'd say practice, take your camera out, go to local restaurants, take local restaurants, not any, you know, commercial and, um, was it corporate places? Cause you don't really want to vibe with them. Um, but local people that, you know, want to do stuff with you. Yeah. As far as like social media, um, something I would do is, um, I would make like a saved folder of potential businesses or brands that I want to work uh -huh. with. Um, and I would just kind of save them up in a folder. Um, I wouldn't go straight to the DM, um, in that situation. I will probably engage with them in some kind of way, whether that be liking their photos, following them, you see what I'm saying? And then maybe eventually later down the road, especially if I have work to show, present myself at that point with the, you know, something to back back up my talk. Like, hey, this is what I can do for you and your business. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's so powerful versus you just reaching out to somebody. Hey, I really want to work with you. I'm trying to build such and such. It's like, OK, maybe that's not enough for me, you know, versus you showing me a portfolio, which you can just do at home. Product photography. Like I said, my wife said, that's a pictures of her shoes, right? Now I beefed up my portfolio. I can show that to a potential client. So it makes me great, you know, a greater chance of getting that sale um, or just building that connection because I showed them what I can do for them, right? So you always have to keep them in mind and, and lead with, hey, this is what I can do for you. This is how this can help your business. This is how this can help you get more customers. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Like you have to come from that standpoint and not just like, you know, look at me. It's all about me. No. Hey, this is how I can help you. You know what I'm saying? I can make you more money within your business by providing you with these professional images. You see what I'm saying? Sell um, yourself. Yeah. Perfect clip said, I don't think my photography Instagram looks professional. Do you have any tips on making it look professional? Um, what's the Instagram? I could, uh, we can critique it on the screen if you want us to. Or just kind of go over it and kind of help everybody. Um, Sean said, I added portrait vids to the grad clients. They love it. See? Mm -hmm. Like, 
it, you should always be thinking of like add-ons and stuff. Like that's how you can make more money within your business. Like what can I add on to this? Right. So I told you I do freelancing too. And a lot of the money I make is, is add-ons, right? So it's, it's add-ons, it's upsells. So I thought about, okay, like I said, like even consulting beginner YouTubers, what else can I add on to this to increase, um, you know, the overall, um, revenue that I'm getting from the sale. Okay. What else may they have? Okay. Maybe a follow-up call in two weeks. I could add that on for extra 80 bucks. You see what I'm saying? Maybe they want me to review their analytics too. Um, and, and learn how analytics work. So that's something I could add on to that. So switch that to photography. Let's say you're a headshot photographer. Um, just off the top of my head, some add-ons you could have is cutting out the headshot so they can attach that transparent image on other marketing material, right? Something else you could give them is a banner for their social media. That's a potential add-on. Another add-on you could add on to a, a headshot client is video. If he's a headshot client, he probably got a business. He probably needs some little videos for social media. So you have to have these things in place and think of these things and then present it to the client. And that's how you can make more money. You know, see, a lot of people think when it comes to like making money. Let me just increase my overall session price. That doesn't always have to be the case. Maybe you could think of add ons, you know, or you could do both increase the price and do the add ons. Uh, so there's multiple ways you could do it. Uh, Sergio said, have you ever, uh, consider offering your photography side business into your day job? For example, as a hairstylist, perhaps offer headshots to your customers or of course, with the right permission. That's a great, I like that. Um, yes, but I, where I'm at, I kind of do haircuts very fast and, um, I have definitely given my cards out and numbers to people that I know that are serious about you those things. I did. I did. Um, I, sometimes it's good, but then sometimes I, I don't like to only because it's transitioning into my client for both. Now, some like that, but personally, eh, I do and don't. Um, but yes, I have given, you know, my number and our business cards to other people. And also too, I promote Adrian a lot at work. Oh my gosh. A lot. Shoot. Man, she didn't help me grow the channel. Yeah. <laughs> for real um sergio said any thoughts on creating photography memberships like offering families a yearly package to have access to photos on major holidays and birthdays that's a great idea i've never even thought of that that's a great idea. that is um very 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 good i think that's great for people with kids especially um because i know plenty of people that would pay anything for their kids so that's a great idea i think this would um really be good for even like uh branding photography or even like people who do headshots like updated headshots or like branding type sessions creating a membership see that's what i'm saying it's so many it's so many different things you can do to add more revenue to your business it, it's what do you want to do right uh it's so many different things you can do that's a great a great point sergio is uh thinking of like the even a membership like i'm subscribed and sign up for memberships like think about like okay how can i do this for photography right I think the main thing with this too is like, how, how am I going to position this? And like, how does my messaging sound? Right. Because the next step with that would be like packaging up that offering, maybe for uh, a page on your website. How does that look? How does that messaging sound? Does it speak to that client, their desires? Um, does it entice them to reach out and potentially want to book that session? Um, but great point. I like that a lot. Me too. Um, and what's up, man? Happy new year. Just getting on. Uh, what do you feel about outsourcing, um, editing photos? I'm all for it. That's really what I do a lot now <laughs> these days. He's busy and it saves us a lot of time. Yeah. Um, include it in your price and keep it moving. Yeah. A lot of big photographers that I look up to and that maybe y'all look up to a lot of them outsource, you know, a lot of photographers that have like booming businesses, they're outsourcing, you know, um, you know, editing don't really help you make money. You know, you got some people who I used to do it myself. You spend an hours on editing. That's not helping you make money. You know what I'm saying? So think about giving that time to somebody else who's a professional um, specialist with that thing. So they're good, proficient at it. You get some of your time back. You can transition that time into marketing. You could transition that time into maybe some of these other side hustles I talked about. You see what I'm saying? So um, thinking from that perspective, 
can can change things for sure. I'm gonna read that. Like Kimbo said earlier, people are cheap in general. People want to pay close attention to nothing. My question for you is how to get a client to play close Ooh, to 3,000 in a wedding state of MA. That's a great question. Oh, let's see, wow. Let's, let's see. First of all, how, how you going to get a client to pay that much? How, how you going to do it? I mean, so how, do, how does Michael Jordan get people to buy his Jordans? <laughs> how do people – I mean, it's a <laughs> – Oh no, she did. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is they're gonna pay. Um, I mean, how? Like, what? What is that? What does your process look like that gets them to pay? We've you're not done confusing it. me. <laughs> is this a trick question? No. How, <laughs> you, yeah, how are you gonna get somebody to pay that much? I $3, mean, thousand dollars. I don't know. <laughs> Curse! You said you put too much pressure on. Her. She's done it. So I don't know why she's <laughs> acting like that. The money thing is kind of one of those things where, I mean, it sells itself when it comes to us, what we offer. So something I like to, um, <laughs> something I like to include like in our packaging, stuff like that. And what we talk about on the phone is us, you know, you're getting, um, you're getting us, like you're going to get me from the beginning to the end, emails, talks, um, all these things, that stuff is not, it's not for fun all the time. Like sometimes I'm on the phone. Like I was emailing our, our wedding clients this weekend at 12 a.m. last night. Um, that's just when she messaged me and I responded because I was awake. Um, hopefully she notices, but again, dun, 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 back to that. It doesn't matter because she knows this is a business. She's expecting me to respond because this is what she's paying me to do. Mm. So back mm. to that, mm. <laughs> back to that with the whole 3000, I don't look at it as 3000. I look at it as you're, you're paying me for my time. That's what you're doing. Mm. It's just like anything else. <laughs> people, um, people see that big number and freak out. Don't, don't freak out about that though. If you feel like you are worth that and you want to strive for that, do it. A hundred percent. This was the main person that always told me, we, you know, let's raise our prices. Let's raise our prices. And I was like, absolutely not. Because I, I wanted to be the best, but also wanted to charge less. How does that, how, how does that happen? How does that happen? You can't do that. You're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. Think about all the time you're missing out on your family, this and this. Now, again, it is a business, but again, they don't give a dang about you. They don't. They don't. I don't care about what you can do for them. I like that, but she okay. Courage. Okay, let's talk about this. I like that. He said, How do you get a client to pay close to three thousand? That I like that because that's a big amount. Like that's a big commitment, right? Yeah. For me to get you to to spend three thousand dollars on me, that's not easy. So he's saying, like, how do I do that? Right. So I would say this is something that I've learned. It's we focus so much on price. And we think it's so intimidating to clients. Like, oh my God, it's it's three thousand, it's four thousand. There's no way, it's no freaking way they'll buy. That is you talking to yourself. That is you in your own head. That is you in your own way, right? Mm -hmm. So once you can uh, remove that mental block right there, you can move on to the next step, right? Yes. The 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 real the real part. What what a lot of people struggle with is they don't really know how to communicate. The like the value of what they have to offer, mm. you see what I'm saying? Like to to where to what the client wants to hear, to where the client sees this as this is worth it. You see what I'm saying? So it's not really, I guess my main the main thing I'm trying to say is not really the pricing. Is are you communicating how this helps them, how this serves them, how this is the best decision for them? That's that's why we're talking about client communication. Do you know how to effectively communicate that? That's the real question that a lot of y'all need to ask yourselves. It's not like, oh, I can't raise the prices. Oh, I'm scared, this and that. It's, it's not that nobody will pay. That's BS. That's BS. We used to think that. Nobody will pay. Even with other stuff I've done, I've started out low. Nobody will pay this. That is complete BS because people are paying it. They're eating it up. It's, it's Are you communicating that effectively? Do you even look like, does it look like it's worth $3,000? You see what I'm saying? Like, those are the things that really play into, like, if somebody's truly going to invest that much. Mm -hmm. Does it look like it's worth it? Are you communicating that it's worth that much? Are you really conveying the value of this thing that I want? You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, what's, what's the value? I'm going on a tangent, but I, I get excited about this. 
what's the value of this this custom PC I got? Obviously, it was communicated. The value was communicated enough. I know that I needed this to run my business. Period. It, it would that that alone really made it worth it for me, because I know that that's going to help me make money. You see what I'm saying? Let's transition that to photography, right? Wedding photography. I'm looking at at that as a client, like, man, these this is the one of the biggest moments in my life. Usually, the the biggest. I need to have this documented memories right i need to know that i can trust these photographers mm. not just portfolio either like just them in general who they are right i need to know that i vibe with them because i'm going to be with them the whole wedding day mm. so i'm just kind of throwing out some things that clients truly value it's not really the price not to every client it's more so are they checking off these boxes of what i truly want from this service or product Dang. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I, hey man. Free. Hey, I, hey, I think I Dang. felt some, felt some come, come, is, come up on me. Is he a preacher? I think I felt some come up on me. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> read that. Come on, give me a little break. What? I need a break after this. What's going oh, on, man. bro? That's for you. Just read it. <laughs> I wanted to see. I got hot, <laughs> If you could do a video on exporting files in the highest quality in Lightroom, that's for you. I yes, he can. He got y'all. Have y'all ever done sports photography? We have not, but Adrian has taken pictures no, of my stepson. Um, oh, you know what? No, no, no. Take it back. We have done some studio work. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Not a whole lot, but we have done some. Yes. Hey, Train, just wanted to say hi. I wasn't aware of this live stream, but I just want to say hello. Wishing you and Kimbo the best. What's up, hello. Jonathan? Gang, gang. What's up? Thanks for coming through, bro. Gang, gang. I don't throw no gang signs. <laughs> Late to the lab. But what's up? What's up? What's up, TJ? What's up, TJ? Thanks for coming through. Man, I need a break after that. I'm hot. <laughs> By the way, I just started photographer. Nice, Pro nice. Photographer. Photography. Nice. <laughs> Can I read? Man, I'm just trying to get away from honest editing, honestly. Oh, yes. Uh, outsource it. Just outsource it. It was so hard for me to start doing that, but once I did it, it's a game changer. Like, we have a wedding coming up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that wedding and I'm going to send it over here. No, so, we're going to call it first. But yeah, yes. well, we call, but I could also, the service that the editing company we use is they have a culling yeah. service too, but mm -hmm. we like to do that because we like to pick the images we like. But I'm outsourcing that bad thing. Yes. I ain't got time. Uh-uh. No way. It saves you a lot of stress too, honestly. Yeah. You're, you, I mean, it is a lot, especially with him and I. Um, and this is another thing to keep in mind too with all these editing questions. Uh, me and him are complete different photographers. So he's in one spot. I'm in another. It's the exact same photo, but it's, it's totally different lighting, totally different uh, dynamics on wherever we're at. Well, guess what? We can't edit it exactly the same because it's not the same. So that just, it saves so much time because I don't edit and then Adrian does. So two photographers, nah. I'm just now a Lightroom user. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what's up. Um, looking at one subject for hours and trying to make them their best self. I hey man, I didn't have those days. Kimbo, no, I'm not going back. No way, <laughs> no way. Right. Just read it out. Kimbo is so right. It's really finding your ideal client. And showcasing the value they are going to pay or not, but you have to put it out there. People buy from who they like. Yes. And also, too, um, one of the things I'd say that we struggle with, nobody's kind of mentioned this, but I'm just going to put it out there. Um, look around your area. Yes. But don't look too hard because people are all different. Uh, you know, you as far as them copying somebody's price. Yes. Other people's price. Yes. Copying or um, looking around at other people's pricing on that, it is a good idea. But like some of y'all who have asked, like, what do we charge for these things? You can ask these questions, but like Adrian was saying, you know, we're all different. Um, that's what makes us so different. Um, don't f focus, excuse me, too much on that part. Um, yes, focus it, but don't make it to where it's stressing you out because we've definitely been there and done that for sure. Have you ever considered expanding your photography business into owning a photo booth or a 360 photo booth? Ah, uh, you know, I think it's kind of, well, I don't know about Adrian, but to me, it's kind of one of those things. It's, it's popular now, but it might not be so much in the future. 
although they are kind of cool. Uh, you got to think about all the ins and outs of that too. That's just one more thing you have to add on to that. It is there. Some of them are cool. Yes. But who's going to run it while we're taking other photos, if that makes sense. You could hire somebody. Well, yeah. Marton, thanks for coming through. He said, I don't know if this has already been answered, but what, why do you think it's hard for a fairly new photographer that has a portfolio to book? Um, that's a great question. So you have work to show, right? And you're still struggling to book clients. That's when you have to start really dissecting um, these different elements within your business, right? Maybe that's your social social media presence. Maybe that's your actual photography. Maybe that's your uh, website. Maybe that's your client communication, right? And it depends. Where does that where is this falling off? It's, it's different stages to this, right? Maybe you don't have people reaching out. Okay, something's wrong. You see what I'm saying? Maybe now it's a discovery issue. People aren't discovering you. Why is that? Mm. Is your SEO not good? Well, most people that reach out to us now, they're coming from Google. You see what I'm saying? So they're not coming from Facebook. And so they're coming from Google, which comes from our SEO, which Kimball knows I work dang hard on. You know what I mean? So that's a discovery issue. Maybe you get the clients to reach out but they're not, um, you're not booking them. Okay. That's the sales issue you see. And people want to be quick to put that on price. No, maybe you're having a tough time conveying that value to them. You see what I'm saying? Maybe you need to change your process and get these people on the phone because maybe it's easier for you, which I feel like for Kimbo, it was easier for her to convey our value when she talked to people versus her emailing because she's a, she's a people person. She talks to people every day. That's where she's most comfortable. You see what I'm saying? Um, it, man, it's, it depends. But I would go and break down all the stuff I talked about and see where you can improve those things. You always have to bring it back on yourself. I know it's it's not easy and we want to say, oh, it's the market. It's the, it's the location. It's the people. They don't want to pay. That is a lame excuse. I'm going to tell you like it is because I've done it myself. That is a lame ass excuse, right? You have to reflect back on yourself. What can I improve on? Maybe it's what I'm offering. Maybe don't nobody want that. You see what I'm saying? I've offered freelance service with specific things that didn't know it was in a market for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to accept that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Courage, uh, I have a tip for you to help with that. Adrian Lard said, start with your pricing and really know how you get to how you get to 3K. Then you will know how to com communicate. it. I love that. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have no problems when y'all ask me that, but I know from experience booking a client like at 3K, it starts from the bottom. So when I say it starts from the bottom, it starts from that whole bottom part, your social media, your website, your communication, your initial response. Like it's, it's not just the end product that you're really delivering to. You, you see what I'm saying? Like it's a whole client journey. Like, are you checking off all those boxes? You see what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't go back, re uh, reevaluate their whole process and, and look to where, OK, there's some holes right here. My website is trash. I need to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't they don't really do that. And they're like, man, nobody's booking. OK, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Right. Um, Kimball laughing. Uh, man. Y'all got me flooded with comments. Uh, Adrian, I love this live compared to others. Uh, you and your wife come with these um, uh, filling responses versus the usual. It depends on what works for you. <laughs> I love the fruit, fruitful responses. That's one thing. I, I feel like I go on too long sometimes, but. He does. Nah, because I'm, <laughs> I do that because I'm really trying to help you understand what you asked me. No, he's very passionate about this. Yeah, stuff. you know what I'm saying? Like if I just tell you, oh, go change your website. <laughs> it's like okay what do i change you know what i mean like i've 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 followed people and i've um you know i've seen people that they give that kind of very vague yeah that's why in, it's a dry response one thing you cannot say about my channel is that i do you cannot say that i don't go into detail i don't care because i make it a thing to go into detail when i'm talking about stuff because i'm really trying to help you understand mm -hmm you know, this topic that I'm talking about, Yeah. you know, so for sure. I appreciate that a lot. That means a lot. Um, 
sometimes the things you see your clients don't see or don't care about try it one time with uh some of that detail and see oh what do you think about that i like that that's like very that. true because like i'm a pixel peeper so i watch and see everything but um there are some people that really don't care especially when it comes to uh kid photography stuff uh, family photos stuff like that um they don't want their kids to be look looking perfect they just don't you know so they don't really care about the flyaways and stuff like that i think he's talking about like two, oh wait um like things uh like your your offerings and stuff oh and your service. sorry <laughs> go back to that. <laughs> yeah I, I feel what you're saying so for sure man yep that that's a, that's that could be a harsh thing for somebody to really um you know recognize like hey my clients don't care about this no i think he is talking about that because look that's the same uh, one that's maybe so about, i don't know <laughs> no flavor imogen thanks for recommending that <laughs> screwdriver drink your last via lol <laughs> Hey, we had my mother. -in -law, she actually put me on those. We had my mother in law drinking those uh, on Christmas Day. She was lit. Uh, it's Liddy. So lit. uh, what do you think about working with a modeling agency? Sure, if that's what you want to do. You I mean, what do you think? I think it's a great thing if, you know, uh, they probably have a lot more ideas as far as like, they could probably help you out with more things, is where I'm getting at. We've never done it. But we've never done it, no. Sorry, I'm all in y'all chat. LOL. No, that's the part of the chat. Yeah. Y'all yeah, can answer people's questions and input. That's what I do. I, I'm actually, this is my first time, you know, on here in a while. Um, I love that y'all are helping each other out too. I think that's great. Yeah, that's 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 what this is about. This isn't just about me. This isn't about me at all. We get on here and we talk about stuff that y'all have questions about. We haven't even talked about ourselves or nothing really. I, we're talking about stuff that can actually. Which I want to know. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> yeah it's okay bro shoot your whatever y'all want to put in the chat as long as it ain't disrespectful or you know like being mean to nobody i'm cool with it um however i have them pick the photos and then i edit i will pre uh be appreciated for my time in making them look their best self why i gotta pay for blah 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 here you go <laughs> you gotta cut it then short then fine. you gotta fine. cut it short then <laughs> they ain't the one for you what do you say video on seo please no flavor. You already know, bro. I got you, man. I actually got that in the pipeline, matter of fact. Um, yeah, SEO is uh you definitely want to be building your SEO, right? It's one of those things that takes time to build. But like I said, thinking in the future, discoverability, that's one part of booking clients. Can they see me? Can they see this little guy over here waving his hand? Do you see me? Hey, I'm a photographer. Right. One part of that is SEO. It's getting discovered. Right. So that's even booking client people like, how can I book? OK. Are we focusing on discoverability? Because that's one part of booking people, because before they even reach out, they got to find you first. How are they going to find you? It's true. They social media ain't the only place they can find you. And, and, and sometimes it's not the best place. You know, people that are searching on Google are actually I find those people are more qualified. You see what I'm saying? They're they're ready to make a purchase de decision, right? People on social media, they just scroll in to, to get entertainment most of the time. They're not going on social media really to buy stuff, you know, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten. So people on Google, it's like these people are more serious. Like if a person types wedding photographers college station, they're looking to potentially they hire a, a wedding photographer. That's why it's on you. To make sure that SEO is placed. So when they search wedding photographer college station, ta ting, Adrian and Kimberly pop up, right? So that's that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Infinite One Productions. Thanks for coming through. Um, happy new year. Love the fact that you uh work, work together. It's hard for a solo photographer dropping jewels tonight. Thank you. Yes, I've even told my wife before, I don't know if I could do this by myself. I'm not afraid to say that. So you want thoughts on that? uh it's very hard i think it's um very i don't know i feel comfortable with you know him and i we, it took a while for us to get on the same page for sure but i think uh we balance each other out and i think uh it's a great thing yes i couldn't imagine shooting a wedding by myself oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i mean i could do it but it gives me a peace of mind knowing my wife is there i got somebody i could bounce ideas off of she brings a different element right she knows how to talk to people not that i don't know how to talk to people but she's very good at that 
that's not my strong suit. So we we lean on each other's strengths. I lean on that she can talk to people, right? She leans on Adrian is very like technical. He knows everything yes. about lights to where she don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. I set up her flash. I set up her CTO jails, all that stuff. If she having issues with her flash, she brings it over to me. I fix it. She knows she can count on me. I can. Yeah, so I, I love it, man. I love I love working with my wife. We we butted heads a lot. Aww. Um, but we butted heads a lot. We used to well, like a lot is an understatement. We used to uh be at each other's necks at some events, <laughs> but we've came a long dang way, and I'm proud of it for yes, sure. For sure. Uh, thanks, bro. No problem, man. Maurice said, "How do you get your SEO up or drive traffic towards your website?" Great question. Can Kimberly answer that? Nope. <laughs> jokes okay so get your seo up the thing i would say um if you don't even want to like do the stuff for yourself and put in that work because it can take a lot of time hire a professional to do it just kind of like how i said with the editing you could hire somebody that specializes in seo they have a better chance of getting it right than you do right because we're photographers excuse me we're not seo specialists i just took it apart i wanted to learn all this stuff so i did it myself um, but in that process, I made a lot of mistakes and wasted a lot of time. Um, but certain things you could do to get your SEO up. Um, parts of that is your, your copy on your website. So within your copy, you have specific keywords in, in, uh, specific keywords that you're targeting that, um, people are searching for, right? Um, you have things like, I think it's called H1 tags, things like that. Um, these things are helping you rank, helping Google identify, what your content is about, what your website is about, and helping you rank for specific words on Google. Um, other things you can rank for is your images. Like if you label your images right with alt tags and things like that, they can pop up in search. So somebody could be searching photography at such and such venue, and you have all your images is filled out correctly from an SEO perspective. Now those images are popping up when they search for them. They're like, oh, these are good images. Bam, let me click on the website. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's it's a lot of different parts. I'll make a whole video about it. I got y'all. Uh, Marchand said, as a wedding photographer, what do you think about mini sessions? Um, I think they're fine when done correctly. Um, I actually have a, a mini session mini course that you can get when you purchase my photography business starter kit. You have to pay for it. But it's an upsell. We talked about upsells because if you purchase this, you may be interested in that. Kimbo, don't even know about that. Um, so if you do um, purchase my photography business starter kit, I have the link down below. When you go to checkout, you'll see a um, prompt that says, do you want to purchase uh, this mini session course? So I made a little small course talking about mini sessions. Um, it's not expensive at all. Um, I think they're fine when done correctly. It depends on how you how you you have to approach it right. Why why are you even doing many sessions? You see what I'm saying? You're just trying to book a lot of clients. Is it because you're struggling to book clients? Like, well, what's the purpose behind doing a mini session? Why not just do the full sessions, right? So with the mini sessions, you can do the, a lot of sessions in volume, right? It's a smaller type session. It's usually quicker. Um, some people like that. Parents, especially with kids, that's why you see a lot of family. Uh, clients doing mini sessions because their kids don't act right and it's quick you do it in 15 minutes get your images you done <laughs> right yeah um where, where was i going with this um dang i just had a brain fart that's loud for you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah see the thing with these is they can build your repeat clients right mm -hmm. i think this is a great for new photographers man y'all got to get the little course if you get the starter kit get the mini session mini course i'll break it all down right? Um, and you can consume it within a day. It's not going to take forever. I break it all down in there. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, but you can do these as a new photographer. It can help you build your clientele, right? And it's a, usually a lower type offering. So it's like a, a way to get them in the door, right? Get them in the door. Now they can experience, oh, he's good. This is what he delivers. Now I want to come back for the full session. You see what I'm saying? So it's a way as a new photographer 
because maybe you have, you, you know, you're not really confident yet, struggling with pricing. Okay, let me get them in the door with this small offering. Yeah. And 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 really over deliver, do a great job. I can get them later on with the as a full client, and I could even upsell them with the mini session. So now the mini session turns into a full session. If I got my upsells right, yeah. you see what I'm saying? When done correctly, you can make thousands doing mini sessions in one day. You want to talk about them a little bit? Or what's your advice? Um, I, I definitely think that everything you said is right. Um, there are cons to them, though. Definitely cons because people are going to assume that you are, you know, they're going to reach out. Like we just had some. Uh, I don't even think I told you. But I've had two people reach out around Christmas and asked if we were doing mini sessions this year. Well, we um, told yeah. But prior to this, we have done them, which is why they reached out. They have never booked us for full sessions. They've only booked us for mini sessions. So mm, it's kind of one of those things. It's like. But you can get a full session from a mini session. Yes, you definitely but can. Some people don't. They're just doing it for the cheaper price. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it, they, it depends on how you're doing them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Triple Five Studio, thanks for coming through. Oh, we are at one hour and 45 minutes of straight value. What you think? I am hot, y'all. Hey, this is what we do on this channel, man. So if you ain't subscribed, you need to subscribe. We ain't on here giving y'all BS answers. We are deep diving into y'all's questions and giving y'all legit actionable steps that you can do. That's what I feel like. So, hey, that's my value proposition for you on this channel. I, I'm going to give it to you straight and you, you're you going to leave with something you could take away. N not just no BS. So subscribe. If you're not subscribed, that's my plug. Um, and like this video. If you haven't liked this video already, please drop a like. It really helps. That's all I ask. Just drop a little like. It helps if you're getting value from this. Um, Triple Five said, would you recommend putting prices on your website or just listing your service without price so they would need to contact to get it? I've heard to not put prices. What's your thoughts, Kimo? Um, we've definitely had, or I've seen both. Um, but again, you want to make it um, very convenient for your customers and your clients. Mm -hmm. um, maybe people don't like the the whole, um, what's it called? Game lover. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, maybe people don't like the, uh, what's it called? Confrontation. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. And they don't want to go out of their way to message you or to email you or call you. Some people don't want to do that. Some people are like, man, I don't have time for that. They are busy. So, you know, I don't, I would say you can put it. Uh, you go to Walmart where they got, they got their prices. <laughs> I would put prices because I don't want to say you have to do it because for some people it, it works when they don't do it. Right. Because they're trying to get that client to reach out, sell themselves, whatever. They're not they don't want to focus on price. From my perspective, if I'm doing reaching out for something like that and I can't see the prices, I'm probably going to move on. So that's what I think about. Mm. it. Yeah. And in the chat, I just seen it because I wouldn't scroll down. But I seen I guess George Floyd is now banned. <laughs> Thank you all for saying ban. Um, and People I see some of y'all saying what the heck man. he was. He, he said N word lover, which is crazy, man. People are freaking crazy. Crazy. Um, but not going to let this ruin the good vibes that we have going on this live. But, dude, you're a band. I don't even know why you would do something like that. But I guess whatever, man. It's crazy. So stupid. Yeah. Uh, M. Davis said, how do you stop the V1 flash from overheating? I've actually never had my V1 overheat. So if it's overheating, I, I would think you're popping off too many flashes. Right? You remember with the other ones, we had them overheat. Yeah. Maybe it's just being used too much and it's not getting enough time to uh to recycle right um some flashes overheat when they're yeah. overused um but i haven't had that with my my v1 uh sean said yeah i'm trying to wrap my head around seo video coming soon about seo m dot davis what's up thanks for coming through do you offer slash provide video as well as photo during weddings or outsource outsource the video so we do offer video, but it's not really something we push yet. Mm -hmm. Once again, um, yeah, it's just not something that we're really pushing like that yet because we really want to focus on delivering great photography. Um, that was always our thing is we really want to focus on this so we could do the best job at it um, versus, you know, if we did video, it would be my wife doing it and I would be the main shooter. 
she wouldn't be really be shooting photos. So we it's just not something that we really want to do right now. Um, Sean said he did a wedding once by himself uh, for a close friend. They were awesome, but I ran it. Uh, the entire day lost 10 pounds never again <laughs> he said he lost 10 pounds. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> hey that i i believe I you believe that you. is it's it's hard to do that's what, well yeah. we've never done it by ourselves but that's just it it's like um the day of i am more of the go-to like the talker the definitely um you know trying to find people's uh parents and find whoever and it's it's a lot but it's so worth it once you see the ending result of that day. It is a beautiful day that you should be proud that people booked you for as far as, um, you know, a special moment in their life. So that's how I look at it. But, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot for sure. Something I'm sitting there. Or a kid in the tray. I mean, in the what? <laughs> um, Adrian is putting a starter kit comment. Photography business starter kit in the comments in the chat. So be on the lookout right at this second. So Just somebody asked link. about it. So I'm going to just give you the link. Yes. Um, it is uh, the starter kit is $23. Um, and you can get the mini session mini course as a add on. Uh, so you won't see that until you check out. Um, so I'll put a link in the chat if you want to check that out because somebody asked for it. Um. I thought you could click on the link in the chat. I thought you could too. Right. Can y'all click on that link? If you can't click on the link, on um, just look in the uh, video description. It's, it should be in the video description oh, at the top. Yeah. Um, um, Miriam. Okay. I just explained that. Oh, yeah. It's on there. Okay. So it, it's there. Yeah. That, that stuff was crazy with the, the person. <laughs> I see, I'm seeing y'all's comments now. Like people are freaking nuts, man. I don't even know what to say to that. I, I don't. I would never do something like that. Uh, I don't disrespect people in person or on the internet. So me and my wife are real big on just like respect. We don't talk crazy to people. We're nice to people. Um, go out our way to help people. Yeah. So when I see certain stuff, not just from that, but just in general in the world, it's just like, I, I don't get it. I, I, it's I crazy, don't, man. I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't get it. It's some crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay, people are saying thank you. Okay, link is uh clickable. The link takes you away from the live, but it works. Yeah, it's taking you away from all this knowledgeable information. Yeah, don't leave, guys. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, the starter kit is helpful. Um, if you're a beginner, I think you can still get something away from it. If you haven't, you don't have, you have experience with not like a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. um, I made that, of course, it's passive income. It's something that I make sales in a lot, but I made it and put stuff in there of stuff that I wish I knew when I was just starting out. And it's not just like me just spitting knowledge. There's actually, actually a lot of resources in there. So links to certain things that I use, um, just resources that can help you get started with your business. Um, so you should check it out if you're interested. Um, triple five said trolls and haters, bro. They can't help it in their world. Sad, I guess so. <laughs> what's, what's you I don't even know what to say, <laughs> man. Luckily, be, but it's crazy because it's always people that you know don't put their actual picture or uh, you know, and sometimes it could be even somebody we know that literally like follows us and says that we're doing a great oh, wow. job, yeah, <laughs> so. It just goes to show you just got to be like, man, but it goes to show too. always stay on your toes when it comes to that stuff, because people are going to be out there like that. Definitely. That's what. Um, that's what anything that you do in life, though. Yes. You know, it, it's going to be people that hate on you. And luckily on YouTube, I'm at 12K now. I, to me, that's that's a lot. It's awesome. Yeah, we just hit 12K today. So shout out to my fam. Cause y'all my fam for helping me get to 12k. I, I mean, I couldn't have done it without y'all. So I appreciate y'all, but that's a whole lot of people. I don't look at that. Like, Oh, it's just 12k. That's 12,000 people who said, I like this guy. I like what he's, he says in his videos. Let me subscribe. Yeah. It's awesome. Like even it's 22 people watching right now. My that's crazy. Mom's Your mom, mm -hmm. Jen, what's up? Oh, <laughs> she a ninja watcher. 
my mother started. my mother-in-law is watching but that's crazy man it's 22 people just here to hear what we have to say yeah that's crazy to me so it, it it doesn't matter um how big i get on this platform um i i can i can promise you that i'm not gonna change i'm gonna continue to to put out the same type of information that's helpful information mm -hmm. not selfish content and i'm gonna continue to be myself mm -hmm. i'm not gonna let trolls or nothing to stop me i've had people's comments stupid stuff but i pay attention to people like y'all you see what i'm saying like it's more positive than negative like if i focus on a negative it's just gonna bring me down right i need to focus on the positives the fact that i do have a community of people that show up and watch my content yes. you know so um sean said you're going to do a video on how to create a digital product Ooh, sp spicy <laughs> Sean, that's spicy right there. That's spicy. Oh um, yeah, that could be something I could do. I don't, I don't want to deviate too much from what I'm doing now because that's how I built my audience. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let me. I'll ask y'all. What's y'all's opinion about as far as me weaving in? It would be content about um side other side hustles but these things are kind of related to what y'all probably already do you know just weaving in some content like that would y'all want to see maybe some content about youtube sometimes um affiliate marketing uh different side hustles hustles you can build as a photographer would that be something that y'all would like to see let me know and maybe we could start doing some stuff like that um sean says salute appreciate that sean thank you thank you thank you um M. Davis said, uh, congrats, but you deliver great Jews. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Jennifer, Whoa. you want to read that? Oh, we got Jen in the building. It's all about, this is my mom. It's all about how you handle it as hard as it is. Best to take the high road. Had to come see whose ass I needed to kick. Jerk, LOL. Love y'all. Love you, mom. <laughs> hey, we got, we got mother-in-law Jen in the building and, and she don't play. So them <laughs> trolls, you, bet, you, you, better t you better tread carefully. Because she will call you out. <laughs> so, hey, I'm just saying. And if you talk crazy to her, oh, I, I may have to get a little spicy up in here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, you want to read that? Yeah. I suggest that for a photographer that. not to do a wedding by themselves. It's just not worth it 100%. That is yes. You're better off finding a student. Oh, yeah. That's just getting into photography or has some knowledge in photography. I completely agree. Cause like I said, the day of it's really crazy. Um, if you've done a wedding, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it is, you definitely want to get there early. You're obviously planning. We've already taken out all of our equipment today and went over everything together. Um, it's just one of those things. It's, it's the biggest, one of the biggest uh, moments of these people's lives. And you want to make sure that you capture, you know, whatever you need to. So it definitely is uh, something to, keep in mind when it comes oh. to it, it's just better because you know whatever he's got we're we're just shooting together it's good <clears throat> excuse me yeah courage um yeah i appreciate you putting that in the comments um man uh wedding photography that's some I, I definitely make more content hopefully i can get some bts from this wedding yeah um because i do want to uh put that on the channel so y'all can actually see like what i'm doing and i could explain why i do these things right um but that's up to the client that's not up to me. Um, but weddings is, it's just not something you want to jump into. Trust us when we say that. You no. do not just want to jump into it. It is completely different from just a regular senior session, a, a family session. This is next level. You're dealing with a, it's not just even just the, the bride and groom. It's the guests. Yes. It's the mother and the mother, the dad. It's a lot of different personalities, right? You got to navigate through that. Right. You got to get these people to open up to you. How do you do that? You know, like I feel like these are things that I, I know how to do now. It, it, these are skills like as a wedding photographer. It's not just taking photos. That's not the only skill you need to know. You need to know how to talk to people. You need to be a good communicator. You need to be a good um, hype man. You need mm -hmm. to be a good just help person. Um, sometimes you even have to help them while they're being emotional. We had that incident yeah. we talked about earlier. Um, you never know what you're going to deal with on the day of. Every wedding is different. Yeah. Um, That's what makes it exciting, wanna, though. Yes. It's and different. it's very fun. We don't want to discourage weddings. For it talking. makes me anxious, but it's exciting knowing that I'm going to be challenged. Oh, yeah. yeah true, you see, true. that's what I like about it. And we, we have a wedding um, Saturday. Saturday. 
Um, this will be our first session of the new year. So yeah. I'm excited about that. It's in our hometown too. Yes. So we're excited about that, but they do make me anxious and I have been thinking about it a lot, but that's because I care. I care that's about it. Feeling. Right. But I do like that feeling because it's going to challenge me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I, I like that. I like being moving fast and being under pressure because it makes me a better photographer. Yes. You know, so I, I like that. Um, M. Davis said, congrats. Um, Sean said, I feel you. I think that might be like how to make money as a photographer without the camera. Uh, OK, that's a good idea, Sean. I like that. Yeah. Like I said, I do want to put out some different type of content. If that's something y'all want to see, uh, let me know. I, I, I just want to talk about a couple of different things, not going away from photography, but I'm thinking more so future. Like I told y'all er earlier, thinking about your business and the future of your business. I, for talk, this is like a little business of mine, my YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking about the future and like, okay, five years from now, Adrian, what do you want to talk about, right? I, do I just want to be known as the guy that just talks about photography? That's it. No, I actually want to build a brand, right? That you get to know me and, and different things about me, you know, that still offer value. So I feel like I have a lot to offer yeah. as far as like, you know, um, Marketing. you know, different opportunities for photographers, building other skills um, and different things like that. So I'm excited. You want to read them? I just did a wedding gig and I would never do it by myself. I'm glad I had a second shooter with me. Can't be two places at one time. Exactly. So, so yes, that. that's kind of what we were saying earlier. Um, you know, we're in the same place, but we're we're different. We're so different. So the kiss, for example, he's getting it, but I'm getting it too. We're getting it from different angles. We're making sure we it's just it's better. You know, for a fact that you know we're working together and it's how do what's the word i was looking for what? um if you don't got it i got it kind of thing uh got each other's back well yeah there's a word i'm looking for but anyway yes it's uh it's good to have two <laughs> for sure <laughs> two two is better than one right yes. um jay vibe says shucks do you brother i enjoy the content i appreciate that jay um jay vibe said hoping hoping y'all's client lets y'all do bts <laughs> I mean, she should. She's super cool. Um, yeah, that's up to the client. I usually will ask. Um, it, it's, it's other things that go into it, too. It depends on like what's like if I feel like I could get good BTS or I feel like, OK, with this situation, I need to focus more. You know, it just depends on when I get there and what the vibe is like, yes, <laughs> you sure. know. Yep. Um, Kurt said, I agree. You should. OK, appreciate that courage. Um, M. Davis said, I just did a wedding and at the last minute, the event went from shooting with the lights on to the lights being turned off. Something similar. DJ strolls were left on, so unexpected. Yeah. Mm. We, have, we have definitely had that happen. Um, a lot of those photos, too. Well, let me go back. First, it's kind of one of those things, again, you just got to be on your toes with that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times when we get to a uh, reception, we always want to make sure that our flashes are on and we have them ready to go as needed um, because we the cake. We do a lot of like setting up before mm -hmm, specific mm -hmm. parts, like because we already know it's coming versus, Correct. you know, just waiting for it to happen. You're going to miss mm -hmm. or like not have your light set up or whatever. So one of the things too, um, what I was saying for the cake, for example, you're not, you're not going to have the lights on for that kind of stuff. So again, the lights are going to come back on and your flash is either going to have to turn off or on or whatever you're doing. So definitely pre be prepared prior to anything happening because, oh God, we've definitely had that stuff <laughs> happen said, oh before. <laughs> Man, weddings are a whole different beast. I like, like my wife said, I'm not trying to scare you, but we got to be real. Yeah. For sure. it, it is not to be taken lightly. No. It is not to be taken lightly. You know, if you go into a wedding, you're not prepared. You will be exposed. Let me say something real quick. Uh -huh. Also, back to that comment real quick, um, M. Dot Davis. Um, one of the things, too, you can go from there is the next time these things happen, you'll be ready. You'll yeah. be like, you know what? I already did it. I've already done it and I'm ready and you'll be prepared. So one of the things with those things is um, any wedding. And again, they're all different. Um, the more you do them, more things will happen and you'll, you'll grow from there. You'll, you'll learn what you do or don't do. So you'll grow. Trust me. You'll be good. 
not trying to <laughs> No, 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 no. Back to what I said. I never, this is exactly why I didn't want to do weddings. But after a couple and after we, the the feeling you get, like we said, um, it's a great feeling. Think about um, people on vacation, for example. Everyone that's on vacation is happy. You're excited. You're there. You're you're ready to be off work. Da, 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 da. So with a wedding, everyone is excited. Like it's an exciting time. So there's plenty of things that are great about a wedding. But you just got to make sure you got all your ducks in a row, like I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> he said, well, you are. <laughs> That's funny, man. Uh, j Vibe said, also, have y'all or do y'all use image AI, especially for big weddings, as the ones y'all do now? Um, I've, I've never used it. I've seen photographers talk about it, but I've never used it. Um, I don't edit weddings. I outsource. I am not editing a wedding. I've done it before. I'm not doing it again. Done it a I have, lot. I've done it a lot. I'm not doing it again. I refuse. Never. And why would I do that? I could be with my wife. I could be eating. <laughs> <laughs> I could be whatever. I'm just, I don't really enjoy it like I used to, you know, and it takes too much time. And I'm honest, like I don't enjoy it. So why not outsource this? And, and I could probably get better results with the, a professional doing it. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And I could get it to my clients quicker. Very quickly. So once again, it's putting the client first. You see what I'm saying? Pit the client first. This is going to help the client because they're excited. They want their photos faster. Hey, if I do this, I can get them their images faster. Yes. So um, you want to read that? The wedding I did, I expected a 4 p.m. ceremony with natural light and ended up having to use a speed light. At the, the ceremony started at 6 when the sun went down. LOL. I'm glad I had it with me. This is what we were just getting our equipment out. No joke. And I told Adrian um, on one of the lights we were looking at, um, go ahead and get it out. He was like, ah, and I was like, ah, uh-uh, we're taking everything. You never know what's going to happen. You don't. And just like you said, you thought it started at certain. Weddings never go on time, by the way. Again, not to scare y'all. But they usually don't. Hey, Triple Five Studio, you tripped me out with that comment. That that gave me a good laugh. He said, well, you are. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Sean said, I'll offer you my video services to follow you around on a day to oh. capture things for a wedding, like a shadow intern learning opportunity. Yeah. Where are you? I mean, are you from here? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. That sounds strange. I've uh, I've mentioned that before to Kimberly, like hiring somebody, mm-hmm. a videographer to follow us, because that would be so much easier. Mm-hmm. But we just uh haven't done it yet. So I'm pretty sure this year it'll be something I do. Oh, just because sure. I'm really prioritizing my channel and, and getting content out. So I'll probably hire somebody to um film so I can get y'all the content. M dot said I was prepared. I watched one of your weddings set up. Also, I helped that's help, so helped cool. him prepare. I love that. I love to hear that. Yeah. Curry said, I remember you said you were trying to do product photography. Can you fill us in with that? A train. Oh, yeah. Did you see my product photography video? Yeah. So um, I need to make an up updated video about that. So that was something that me and my wife were doing um for a while. What? I'm laughing at the next one. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we were doing um pretty much product photography for we did a lot of clothing brands. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we did some other products like um, beanies, hats, beanies, uh, workout stuff, workout stuff, um, water. That 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 is a growing type of uh, industry. Product photography is something you could do at home. Um, if I could help y'all with getting started, I would say practice around photographing stuff around the house. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But also be intentional. Is this the type of products that you want to shoot? Mm-hmm. Right? If you're trying to get gaming product clients you need to photograph some gaming consoles some gaming controllers you see what i'm saying if you want to do product photography for shoes you need to have that in your portfolio see you can't i mean you could have other stuff but it's it's even better when you have that specific thing that talks to that specific client right Mm -hmm. who would you go with if you're looking for a shoe product photographer this one guy's portfolio is full of shoes the other one is full of games yeah, yeah. So, uh, triple five said <laughs> he's scared. <laughs> it's not. I wouldn't even say it's scary. Is it scary at all? In the beginning, maybe. In the beginning, yes, because you don't want to mess up. But like I said, the day of it's like a roller coaster. Just kinda. gotta go with it. 
you just gotta go and hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that helps. That makes it sound better. That it's like a roller coaster and just hang on. No, but hang on for dear you life. You know, like sometimes it's like, woo, it's exciting, that's and then sometimes it's like that Whoa. joke. That joke. That joker will <laughs> drop on you. It will drop in a quick second. Shoot, I'm making fun of her, but she's right. I mean, <laughs> hey, the, uh, yeah, no, I guess that's not, the best way to put the, it. The last wedding we did was amazing. So. You know, there the vibes, the people, the but see, the environment, everything. But see, educate them on the the upfront work yes. to make it amazing yes. because that takes a lot of work. Yes. It doesn't just be amazing. It's, it's like true. poof, magic trick. The wedding is amazing. No, it takes a lot of upfront time and communication in educating mm -hmm. your clients, right? Um, that's something that we feel within our process makes us worth investing in. Correct. Back to yeah. that 3,000. Yes. <laughs> she said back to that 3,000. Uh, yep. Um, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. I got an actual uh, wow. one of my uh, friends. is My buddies is from there. He said a little ways, but I'm doing more vids now, and I'm a Sony guy. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. Hey, that A7 IV. What's up with the A7 IV? Y'all, anybody? It came, Has it came out yet? Yeah. I don't know if they've started shipping it yet. I was thinking about renting that for this wedding, but I haven't. Is that something y'all want to see? Me rent the A7 IV for this upcoming wedding? Get some content with the A7 IV, see if it's worth buying? Y'all be interested in that? Let me know. What do you shoot with now, Sean? Um, M.Dot says, be a second shooter for your first wedding. What's your thoughts on that? Yes. <laughs> um, or if you know someone... If you know someone that's getting married or maybe, um, I don't know, reach out to someone and ask something like that or even do like a mock trial. Maybe you could do, because here's the thing with portrait photograph photography, it's different between that and like a wedding type of, it. I mean, it's completely different. So even that, maybe you could do more of like a stage type of session to where you know what? I hate wedding dresses. You literally might say that. I don't know. I don't to me, know. that still doesn't give you the experience of a real wedding. Well, no, not a real wedding, but at least they can get an idea oh. of like the, the positions and posing yeah, and stuff like that. But real. yes, definitely uh, definitely be a second shooter. I don't think it's bad at all. At all. Mm -mm. Definitely. All right, guys. We are. Is this a record? Is yes. this a record? Two hours? Yeah, I got to take sure. Look at her trying to get up out of here. Is this a record? I think this is a record, man. Fresh into the new year, two hours of content, two hours of vibing and chilling with people who are dedicated to learning and getting better for the new year, improving their photography, their business. I love it. I love it. Uh, Sean said, I have it now. Um, Was my Xmas gift. I'm jealous. Dang, that's a big gift. I wanted to replace the A7R4 right five. five uh huge ass files <laughs> and wanted a b cam to match the a7 III. Mm, i'm jealous sean i'm jealous man i'm jealous what i'm gonna probably end you up doing <laughs> what i'm gonna probably end up doing is sell, i have two a7 III's. i'll probably sell one and upgrade one to the a7 IV. Mm -hmm. uh kim knows how i do i will sell some stuff and upgrade you know it, that makes sense that right makes sense. yeah um triple five said worth the time bro much appreciated Love to hear that. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and close up this live. Um, Kimbo has to go, she has to work early. I don't have to work too early. Thank God. <laughs> but I appreciate y'all coming through, man. Um, love to see y'all on here and and chatting with me. Uh Gregory said he's rocking with the cannon, and my second shooter had a A7. Uh, I was jealous of the low light <laughs> capability. Hey, Gregory, that uh Sony's low light is crazy. That's not just hype. That's for real. So Kimbo, what you be pushing that ISO? Can you push that ISO? Man, you could push I told her. That that's why I told her I got it for her. I'm like, hey, this is a huge upgrade because she was shooting with the A7 II. Shoot. Was I wrong? You were not wrong. And that eye autofocus? Oh, yeah. That saves you crazy. The the <laughs> focus abilities in a low light alone, to me, makes Sony um, something that you should at least look into. I don't want to just be like, oh, it's, you should get Sony. You should get Sony. It's good, though. Yeah, it's good. So it's definitely worth it. Um, twenty five hundred a seven four. I'm trying to catch the a seven R three at the moment. 
I've I've heard a lot of great things about them them A seven Rs, man. Uh, man, I'll tell you my story. That will be my YouTube video. Thanks for the live, bro. Appreciate you, Sean, for coming through, engaging in the the chat. Love to see it, man. I appreciate you. He said the R six is great in low light. That's the Canon R six, right? Okay. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up, man. Once again, all love. Thanks for y'all. Thanks to y'all for coming through. Y'all always come through, man. Kicking yeah. it with us late. I mean, it's late. I know y'all got to go to work. Y'all kicking it with us. Happy New Year once again. It's 2022. Are y'all not excited? It's a new year. It's a fresh start. Forget what happened last year. It's a whole new year. <laughs> hey, no, I'm serious. Because yeah. maybe some of y'all did not have the best year. But look, it's a new year. Let's start fresh. Let's get it, man. These goals, I'm pretty sure we all have goals. Let's get it. All you got to do is stick to it. Stick to it, man. If you're serious about something, I mean, just hold yourself accountable. You see what I'm saying? If you say you're going to do something, do it. You know what I'm saying? Just a little New Year's advice. What's your last word? Come on. <laughs> he said the ashy feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Again? Yeah. This is wilding on here. Man. What do you say? He said, glad to see you guys laughing about them ashy feet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that had me rolling. I'm telling bro. you, we don't see some crazy stuff for sure. What's funny is tell them how you always like get on me and myself. Oh man, <laughs> I put lotion. I mean TMI. I put lotion on from head to toe when I got out of the shower. And him and my stepson, they don't. They're not the lotion people, so they are ashy 99.9 percent .9 of the time. So I call them out every single time. My wife is always. Cracking jokes on me and my son about ass. She'd be like, dang your legs ashy. Yes, dang them yes, knees. Yes. Dang Asian, your elbows ashy. I'm like, chill, man. Like, that is real life. That is her. <laughs> we be talking a lot of a lot of shit to each other for real, though. <laughs> Diggs is funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone, what's up, bro? He said, dang, I'm late. Yeah, you two hours late, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's always, uh, I appreciate you for at least stopping by. I like your uh, picture. Yeah, that's dope. Uh, Daniel said, really love your channel and all the content. Love to hear it. Daniel, thanks for coming through. Happy New Year. He said, wait, wait, <laughs> this is funny. Y'all funny. <laughs> Sean said, we like skin. I'm saying no, that. No, uh, Adrian does. Hey, Kimbo said my elbows be ashy. No. Man, I don't even be ashy like no, that. No, his, uh, yes. Yes, Sean. Now, he, my, he, my son, them knees. He's a little darker than Adrian. Them knees. And he, Them knees <laughs> be looking like they you know, can eat, eat some, some powdered donuts sometime, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. He said we don't get ashy. He said on blast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> y'all funny, man. All right, y'all. Happy New Year. Good night. Um, Thanks for coming through again, y'all. We're going to, we like I said, this the A-Train. <laughs> this the A-Train and Kimbo show. Hey. This is how we do things. Y'all can be expecting to see this more. Um, So, once again, I'll see y'all in my next video. Hope y'all have a great night. Peace.